Mmm. God damn, Gary. Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadence, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. God, it's early, but we're late, but it's still early, right? We're late. We're late. Well, dude, I had to set everything up myself, you know, because I'm. <laughs> Listen to Mr. Fucking Hollywood. Yeah, I had to like I set everything to up set myself. I get invited to Hollywood events and, and red carpets. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> I'm Wait, is that true? I'm you red carpet? I was not invited to any red carpets. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I rent carpets. You yeah, rent I, I rent carpets. Rent, yeah, I rent a carpet. I can't afford a fucking full-time carpet. <laughs> Who can afford to buy a carpet? These days? Exactly. Yeah, carpets are, yeah. Rent it by the day. I want a flying carpet. That'd be fun. Ooh, yeah. That would <laughs> be fun. i off, though. What was that? That was my real BBC alarm for the for the normal time. For the normal time. Normal time. <laughs> oh, to get up. That's not the normal time. Oh, yeah. This is not the yeah, normal yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, that, that's my you've got an hour and 15 minutes until the real BBC alarm. Yeah, it takes me about that much time to get going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to eat. I got I got well, I got to make sure I'm awake. Then I got to fucking eat, drink, wash, dress. Dude, yeah, moving a little slower. These Set days, up the stream all yeah. by myself. All by myself. Uh, this is the real BBC bagging, boarding, and chatting. And I'll grab my comics in a little bit. I didn't have time to get those. Uh, I got a razor fist book. I can show you. Right here. Look at that. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I got some uh, toys to open too. That'll be fun. Uh, so the reason we're early today is I'm going to go see Mission Impossible right after this. So uh, yeah, I, I don't live in Europe, so I had to wait a day. Uh, and I have just been spending my time making a video and watching all six Mission Impossibles, and I just finished Fallout right before the show. Fucking love that movie. It's so good. It's so damn it good. Cavill's great. He's We're freaking... allowed to talk about spoilers for that movie, right? We can talk yeah. about spoilers for yeah. that movie, so, for sure. I think it's a huge regret that Cavill dies in that movie. <laughs> I do. Totally. Mm. But, I mean, it, see, in, in Hollywood in the past, Mahler... He would come back. He would just have like a little scar on his face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought they were gonna remember when like the oil goes all over him and he like fucks up his face. It's like yeah. oh, this is perfect. Now knock him off the cliff and no, don't see a body, and he'll come mm. back. He'll be great. Then he had a helicopter fall on his head. I, I like how yeah. the, I, <laughs> I like Lane being alive. I think that guy's a good villain too. All right, so uh, yeah, no, the actor's great. He was in Prometheus. Remember that? Oh yeah. He was like. The navigator well, guy. I, since since they already made Phelps the bad guy number one, which I still hate. 
by the way, because I I was I'm old enough to be a fan of the show. What's so funny about that, Gary, is I saw a tweet that was like relatively viral, and it was like you can tell nerds have like made up things to be angry about because if they were truly consistent, when Mission Impossible One came out, they would have complained that as an adaptation they made Phelps a bad guy. And I was like, oh, I I have a friend who thinks that. <laughs> Hello. You you just been, uh, <laughs> I fucking just hate it. The genuine nerd now. Is I guess so. Like, didn't the the latest because uh, I didn't see it. Uh, didn't the latest Charlie's Angels movie make Bosley the bad guy as well? As well, did it? I can't remember. Uh, I didn't see it either. Or, right. or uh, Charlie, <laughs> either Charlie or Boswell, the the bad guy in it. Can't imagine why it failed. Can't imagine. Uh, but aside from that, uh, I see Lane is kind of uh, a Bond, a figure, a Bond who went bad. You know, because he was former. But he gets to kill Alec Baldwin, so that's great. That was uh, (laughs) my favorite scene in Fallout. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, as you. No, Alec Baldwin's the good guy. No, he's not. No, he's not. People always share that clip now from Fallout where Alec Baldwin says, pretty sure this gun is loaded. (laughs) 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 Like, oh. Oh, I'm looking for the right button. Where is it? Where'd it go? Sorry. I guess I should hit this one. Really exciting show so far. Uh, Love the movie series. Um, I really like one. I like the directing of one because I'm a big Brian De Palma fan, but I just hate the ending. Uh, Number two is the biggest piece of crap. (laughs) Dude, it sucks. A child of the Mission Impossible franchise. It's dreadful. But Anthony Hopkins is in it. <laughs> it He's briefly. probably the only good thing in it. Oh, dude, and some of the lines were written by Ryan Kinnell. You know, like, you yeah. know women. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I it's got two moved. of the best I lines. Yeah. <laughs> in all the series. Uh, but, you know, two lines it's, don't make a good movie. <laughs> yeah, it says, he says something like, so you want, you want you want my my woman to be duplicitous and and go back to uh, to her old boyfriend, and she's like, yeah, which well, is a woman. That's what they do. And then whoa. And then Doug Ray says, uh, "Women are like monkeys or something, and they hold yeah, like they hold on to one branch and they, until they can grab on the other." Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh, they this hold, is yeah, written by Ryan Kinnell." Exactly to one branch until they can grab another. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tandy Newton has just stood there, dude. Fucking I know. Hell. I know. She would have never stood there these days, but that was when she was young. She was so cute, man. I mean, she's 20, about 27, I think, in she's the movie. Not, she's, not, she's not ugly. She's just annoying no, she's in real life. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, man. at all. She's just a hideous person in real life. That's all. <laughs> just a moron. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, typical actor. Hmm. But yeah, that scene where they drop it off to do gray or Doug Ray or whatever, whatever. Gray, I could have been gray. Wolverine. I should have been Wolverine. That's all he says every when he gets up. He has PTSD from a fucking Hugh Jackman, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there's a scene where he gets, she gets dropped off at his house, and she's got to walk up the boardwalk or whatever, and it lasts like ten minutes. It's like Jesus Christ, how long does it take to walk up there? <laughs> it's it's slow mo, then it keeps cutting away. It keeps going, then it keeps cutting back, and and going. It's, it's slow mo, like... then it cuts away. It does another slow mo <laughs> to come back to another slow mo. And then when you called me up, we're like, I'm going to call you. It's like, okay. That, oh, that bit on the jetty. I'm right there, Gary. It's been going on for 10 <laughs> it's minutes. It's still going. It's fucking scene. Uh, which Mission Impossibles does Tom Cruise not ride a motorcycle? Now, I don't know the answer to the question, but there's got to be at least one. I think he rides a motorcycle in most of them, though. Did he ride one in one? I don't think he rode one in I don't one. Think he, no, I don't think he rode one in the first one. Definitely the second one. Definitely the second one. Yeah. Definitely the third one. Definitely the third one. Fourth one. Fourth one. Fifth one. And, <laughs> and sixth one. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely the sixth one. He likes Definitely riding motorcycles. Definitely the seventh one. <laughs> uh, fantastic. Uh, it's it's all fun. The first one is very... Cla- it's a very clandestine film, the first well, one. It's, it's very Cold War. It's very much like the show. Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy type of movie. 
Well, this that's what it is. It's spy versus spy. If you look at this series altogether, Mahler, it would be better if neither organization existed because it's always rogue <laughs> agents. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's like... And even Ethan, Ethan Hunt's a rogue agent <laughs> yeah. as well. Well, dude, the, uh, it's surprising how much the world has not moved on and reacted to the fact that everyone could be wearing those face and audio things. Like... You got it's like scrolls. <laughs> I know, and anything. they actually don't use it enough, uh, in my opinion. That was like one yeah. of the yeah, like I would use that all Remember, the time. The, the MCU introduced those in Winter Soldier, and then we never saw, saw them again. Oh or yeah, I think they only popped up like once in a TV show, maybe. But like it, it was crazy. It's like that's that's amazing. But I mean, at least the series started getting more from from four on. It got a little more consistent. We'll just say. I mean, Ethan's on a motorcycle. <laughs> Everyone. Well, I think the first one's 96, isn't it? 96. The second one is 2000. Dude, the I was... The third one is 2006. Bro. The fourth one is 2011. There is, there is like, big gappage between these yeah. movies. The, the, well, yeah. I was 26 when this series started. <laughs> I was a young wow. lad. Yeah. I know, a long time ago. I know. Well, look I at how... I was in my twenties, with Mission Impossible start. You see how young he looks. He looks like a little baby, and uh, in the first one, though, he's thirty-four in the first one. Yeah, he's playing a thirty-two-year-old. I don't know why they did that. They they it's a couple of years. Who cares? By two years on his on his passport or something. That matters he's to been people in Hollywood. Two years younger. Though. That yeah. matter, dude. Every age you see on Google when you check out a person from uh, Hollywood is wrong, okay? They're yeah, all yeah. fucking liars. <laughs> well, to be fair, since like early 20s to mid 60s, Tom Cruise will look the same. It's, there's going to be a day where we look at him and go, oh, fuck, okay, he's he's entered old age now. He's getting there. He's oh, get yeah, he is. You see him in interviews and you're like, oh, shit. Because you know that he wants to look like Tom Cruise forever. And if he could, he would. Mm. Yeah. He's doing a pretty good job, in all fairness. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of guys embrace the old era, right? Because, like, you know, like Sean Connery, for example, you, and John Cleese. There are these actors where I know them as young and old. There's like a yeah, the two kinds of them. Because obviously, James Bond, Sean Connery versus like, well, The Rock, Sean Connery. Mm -hmm. versus, uh, these two, they're almost like they're the same. Henry actors. Jones, Henry Jones, Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I'm sure Tom Cruise could pull off his old era very well. Yeah, I don't think he. I don't think he wants to. I think. I think Tom wants to look as he feels. And you know, this guy's. I mean, he, yeah, they've been rec you know filming this for the last couple of years or so. But this means that Tom was around 58, 59 when they started filming um, part one and two of Dead Reckoning. Mm -hmm. And this, and and he still tries to do as as much of the practical work himself the stunt work himself and it's incredible what he does at that age is absolutely incredible and and i think he's the poster boy for his you're only as young as you feel and um i think he wants to look as young as he feels well and he's about to become hollywood's fucking favorite person of all time george reeves era. no they're gonna hate him they're gonna despise him i mean they're gonna well they're gonna want him because he makes money well, I mean, the the people with bright like Spielberg saying you single-handedly saved the movie industry. You know, people with an actual brain are, are going to appreciate what Tom Cruise has done. But as we've seen, the movie industry, Hollywood's no longer about making money; it's about pushing ideological messages. I mean, they uh, are as... deeply retarded, but he'll probably have mm. sway enough to make some of his own projects now, right? Got it. Who? I mean. Tom Cruise is his own company. Oh, Tom he's, Cruise he's can do whatever he wants. He's been uh, involved in the Mission gets, Impossibles from the start. Yeah, if Mission Impossible, especially, I mean, he can now already, but he's going to have more carte blanche when, if this one even go, sniffs a billion dollars. Like, he'll rule Hollywood again. Uh, I think before this, a mission, mission, no, Mission Impossible it, it? was considered like a really consistent thing. It did pretty well, but like, uh, it might hit stratosphere. Who knows? It, it depends on uh, how this movie does. It's really long. Uh, the, the the one I'm about to see, but yeah, uh, great George Reeves. Yeah, I finally got one, dude. These are hard to find. <clears throat> this is a custom one I, sent from Brazil, from Dan Vasclan. I got a, uh, I got some of these, Gary. I can't believe I actually got you, something you from Brazil. You didn't get these in America. We get, we got these. These are our action force. This is what we got before GI Joe. Oh. And then Action Force turned into Action Force, but with G.I. Joe characters. Oh. And then it became G.I. Joe proper. So, yeah, we used to, 
Beeston. So these are from God, 82, maybe? So what, what do we got see. here? 250 million global opening is going to be pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Does it reach a billion? Who knows? Who knows? I, I think it's got a really good chance. Really, really good chance. The legs will be interesting to see. It's going to be a lot higher than fucking, you know, Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah. No, and these do really well internationally as well. Like, as well. Well, well, welly well. Uh, despite the onslaught of shiny uh, product uh, that hasn't uh, delivered, i.e. Flash and Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery, the summer domestic box office, I'm going to have to change screens here, uh, at, is that two, wait, don't move it, don't move it. Here, I'll, I'll, I got it. I got it. Now I can't see it at all. Sorry. <laughs> what? Don't touch it. <laughs> Uh, the summer domestic box office at 2.1 billion per com score is pacing six percent uh, behind last year's for the period for the period of May first through July 9th. Uh, but that's last year. Um, but what they aren't comparing it to is summer of 2019, which was the last full release schedule using their COVID excuses, uh, and it's 20 percent off. 20 two zero that's a lot um and that's because 2019 had uh, i believe seven disney films that hit a billion jeez seven was it 19 or 18 can't remember uh but uh yeah I, or it might have been over 2018 and 19 but it's still like it's incredible uh and you think about it uh, no superhero movie has hit a billion since No Way Home. Uh, and uh, mm. that's the only one that's hit it since Endgame. But uh, I think this one's going to do pretty well. Uh, all eyes are on the best-reviewed Mission Impossible of all time. Uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. It's going to be... T Fallout's fucking good, man. Fallout is the best mm. one. And I think by a ways. I like them all from... I think three's pretty good. That's the nicest thing I'll ever say about Jar Jar Abrams. Uh, and then uh, I think they... give credit where credit's due. Well, yeah, Brad Bird, yeah. Brad Bird, I did a great job on four. I love on four. Yeah, Ghost Protocol, Ghost Protocol. is the shit. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, brilliant. I love that one. Yeah, that's a good one too. But I think Fallout's the best by a, by a long shot. Uh, to hopefully get us on a July roll Wednesday with an expected franchise global five day record of 250 million made up of 90 million domestic and 160 million abroad, uh, 70 markets, including Australia and uh, Dan Vascalan, the Brazilian, uh, China, China, France, Germany, Italy, Korea, Mexico, Spain. Why does it say Mexico, Spain? Like it's one thing. You see that there's, there's, there's no oasis. There's no comma between Mexico, Spain, uh, Taiwan, and the United Kingdom. Are you that united though? Really? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> really? Uh, so yeah, it's going to do pretty well. I think it does better than that. That's just me. I think it does better than uh, I think it does a hundred million domestic. Oh, I think it's going to go over a hundred million domestic. Yeah. Maybe a hundred, hundred and ten. Yeah. Domestic. Um, I love. It. I mean, I, I got my review out yesterday. Obviously, we're gonna keep spoiler free because there's probably a lot of you that haven't seen it. And we, I, I personally would like you to go see it. Uh, but I, I fucking loved it. Absolutely adore. I loved it. I came out of that two hours forty five minutes, and it went like boom. Whereas when I was watching Indiana Jones, I was just I was clock watching, looking at my phone, desperate for that fucking thing to end. And as soon as the first credit went out, I was, boom, out that door. Uh, and I'm going to go back and see it with a couple of mates who were unable to see it, because I definitely want to see this film again. I thought it was fan-fucking-tastic. All right. Mahler's seen it, but he's not going to say anything right now. We're just going <laughs> to... I, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, you should go see it. Action is on the rise right now. Um, I think it's absolutely worthwhile. Obviously, it being a part one of two as well means that there's... Well, we'll see how people feel about uh, this as a half. I don't think it was as good as Fallout. Okay. 
That's fair. But I thought Fallout was kind of exceptional. Um, and a phenomenal movie. Um, what I mean by exceptional was like when I saw it, I was like, "Shit, man! I didn't expect a Mission Impossible movie to be this good." I liked mm. them, I enjoyed them, but I was quite surprised with Fallout. Fallout, it is an exceptional. Yeah, Fallout it's amps it up because... with uh, it's got it's got a better story. It just has a better story, and and everybody they make use of the characters really well, and uh, it's got a really good payoff. Henry, Henry Cavill was uh, really good in it. Shows that the guy can really add to a movie. And he totally made the right choice keeping his mustache on. Yeah, <laughs> he just did. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> he just fucking did. That was a better choice. Uh, oh, and yeah. if you've never seen Man from Uncle, he's freaking. That's a great movie. Good film. That is a great movie. Aren't they going? They're going ahead with the sequel now. Apparently, um, not with Army Hammer. Oh, maybe not with Army Hammer, but yeah. uh, they're go, they going ahead with uh, <laughs> Napoleon Solo and Henry Cavill. Uh, is, oh, people don't like cannibals now. Damn. Uh, prejudice what is what can you say yeah oh, it's weird you always it's w- real weird no you <laughs> always wondered why army hammer was a decent actor and you want to talk about privilege from a like a, a mega mm. wealthy family and you're like how yeah. did this guy not make it any farther and it's oh he's really fucking weird behind the scenes yeah. that makes a lot of sense um kevin spacey's career was strange if you remember uh, mm-hmm. He showed up in Wise Guy and fucking was brilliant in that TV show. And it looked like uh, it was sky's the limit for this guy. Then he disappeared for a little while. Then he came back. And you're like, that was weird. Like, he should have been a star longer. Um, and you go, oh, he was really weird behind that. Well, <laughs> he's a diddler behind the scenes. Uh, super allegedly not so much <laughs> my opinion. That's just my opinion. It's just an opinion. That's all. Don't know if it's a fact or not. But yeah, 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 you find out that like some actors are just they'll call it difficult to work with because Kevin Spacey. You, because you can't bring your kids to the set. That's a little difficult. <laughs> when Kevin Spacey fucked up coming out, you know, you know stuff is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Spacey's diddling people. No. I'm gay. Yeah. No, no, Kevin, that's not that's not how it works. It's not how it works, um, bro. <laughs> some people, I think, might be confused by me mentioning cannibalism. Do people not know? Or, Do like, you not know about Army Hammer's uh, taste in food? Yeah. Uh, look yeah. it up. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up. It's look so it up. Weird, man. <laughs> look it up. Uh, and that was all going down during the whole, like, Me Too thing when everybody was just dropping like flies. So, uh, yeah, there's that. There's that, uh, but uh, no, uh, I'm gonna see it. I, I, I'm gonna see it. But mm-hmm. um, Haley Atwell's she's the she has some great assets. Yeah. Oh, uh, she's got some great assets. She's, all right, yeah. she, she stands out. Yeah. yeah, she stands out as a. She, she got a great. Out. Her character goes through a lot of different shit, and it's great to see the the, the changes and the and the. Uh, her strengths, her weaknesses. It's great she to see her. Job, she should be in more stuff. She deserves it. And yes, big really time. <laughs> yes. But she's, she she excels in this story. She's really, kind of annoying really that, good. Um, her role in Captain America didn't kick her off better into more stuff. Agent Carter? Or just, well, you, you, got, I there was Agent you, you Carter. could get the, the two seasons of that, but that was... Isn't it stupid? Like th- those seasons, I assume they stopped because it just wasn't successful enough. When if it was these days, it should have gone for like five seasons, probably, even if nobody was watching it. It was pretty good. I watched the first season. I, I liked season I one. Liked, I liked season yeah. one. It was okay. I didn't see season two though. Of what? It was Agent, uh, Agent Carter. Carter. It's yeah. Some, it, it's kind of like Agents of Shield, where it's like half and half, whether or not you're even supposed to think it's continuity. Like how seriously they treat it, and obviously lower budget with like guest stars popping in every once in a while and you're like oh look it's, it's him yeah howard stark is in a couple of the episodes i think yes, yes. he is yes he is yeah yeah it was pretty um, good it was pretty good cool i i think a little overpraised by some people but i thought it was pretty good mm-hmm. it's fine it's what? fine she's hot agent carter. okay yeah agent carter yeah it's good it was fine, it was fine. she is not overrated but the show no was. show <laughs> yes <laughs> if, if you can do this peripheral shows you have to do it right. You have to be prepared to bring in superheroes once in a while. If you're going to do a peripheral show in a superhero universe, you need to have the superhero coming in. You can't just, uh, you know, Gotham. 
we'll have little baby Batman until the end. like, what the fuck? And all of, uh, oh, now we know why Batman defeated all his villains. They were all in their 80s by the time yeah. they, they yeah. grew up. <laughs> I've got you now, Joker. Mm. That's the other thing. Those spin-off shows or you know, supplementary ones, they need to feel like weighty instead of nothing that happens here really matters at all. You're just sort of here or you're waiting for bigger stuff. The waiting room of shows. Yep. Uh, we have oh, okay. I know I we asked, we, we asked, uh, well, we got to look at the Wolverine costume, that's what I was looking for. Mm. But we've I got half a picture here, I don't have the full shot. Um, I'll find the full and then, shot. And uh, the, the Ahsoka trailer's just dropped, and I put the link in the oh, Ooh, yeah. Exciting. But I want, and Mahler, I wanted to ask you because I know I remember Az's answer, but I don't remember yours. Gun to your head. Oh, um, uh, do you watch Flash or Indiana Jones again? Flash. That's easy. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I um, agree. The stuff I like in Flash, even if uh, I'm being manipulated, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like I could, I know. This is there's a few lines, a few scenes where I'm like, eh, some comments to get. Dial of Destiny, I believe in our EFAP, we complimented one to three lines. There was no scenes that we complimented. It was just one two or three lines uh it was a miserable fucking film and i don't want to see it ever again no 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 so, yeah easy for me answer wise yeah um and we'll definitely talk about uh the disaster that has been indiana jones it's been glorious and i will tease you with this it needed to happen it was something oh, that we desperately needed <clears throat> to happen so for people out there who are saying we're celebrating its failure, yes. 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 Oh, yeah. And yes. I'll tell you I why. I shit like that to be successful. Are you kidding me? 100%. Yes. Celebrating it. Celebrating 100. it. I feel like it's bad for storytelling if something like that is successful. No. And I'll it's tell you. The antithesis. And I'll tell mm. you uh, later how this opens the door for a lot of independent creators, things like this. Because it does. One gate falls, thousand gates open. You know, so, oh, I'm rooting for a company's demise. This far, yeah. I mean, honest, I'll be real. It's not a company I've ever really liked. But, um, you know what? Don't work for a shitty I mean, company. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of good people, but don't work for a shitty company. I just think it's funny getting... when, when other companies make shitty products and we hope for their failure, that's normal. When it's when it comes to movies, you can't say that. It's like, I, why? I know. Uh, it Well, it threatens identity. It does. If you have a Disney identity or a, just a superhero or mainstream identity, it threatens the identity. Uh, you know, it, it, it gets well, it gets into uh, that. And uh, the Disnoids, right? They're, the uh, Disnoids. Uh, um, here, oh, actually, let me, can I just uh, share this because this is this is coming from Disney this Christmas. What Jonathan Majors' uh, magazine dreams? <laughs> That's Nearly. fucking Santa Rink thing again. Isn't it's it? uh, no, 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 no. I've linked. It's, is this there, Disney? Yeah, is this yeah. Disney? Timothy Chalamet's oh god origin oh. story. Are you ah. sure that's Disney? Are yeah. You, really? It is, isn't it? One because I thought Disney? that was with Warner Brothers or something. Oh, it might be Warner, yeah. whichever. But uh, whichever. Yeah, put it this way: whoever's putting this out, Warner, oh, Disney, it. wherever. Um, I, I couldn't be any more disinterested if I tried. Are we about to do the thing of, you know, the Johnny Depp Willy Wonka wasn't so bad after all? In this no, because that was shit. That, was, that, was, that was terrible. Know, yeah, the, the, the original be, nailed it. Never do it again. Yes. Just because um, it's so weird. There's been so many bad movies in Hollywood. Why don't you try and remake a bad movie into a good one instead of a good movie into a bad one? Yeah. That's what old Hollywood does. There's, there's, but, oh wow, yay! A, a guy was just like, ha, oh, what am I gonna be? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna open a chocolate factory. F well done, mate. Couldn't give a fuck. Uh, it, it's Who gives a fuck. Fart in the wind. It'll be a fart. Throw your money down the drain. Dude, uh, the, 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 after this, after this, like glut of movies we've just gotten in June, it's gonna be pretty sparse. Yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah, it's going to be pretty sparse, and then we're 
basically into another COVID era after Dude, that this, because of the strike. This company is 50 billion in debt. I know. I know. But uh, Ma hey, Max passed up Disney Plus and streaming, according to some website who doesn't really do any data. <laughs> Which I don't care. They both suck. Uh, <laughs> and it says Amazon Prime's the the most watched. It's like, how do you know that? We don't even know how many Prime active video customers there are. We have hmm. no fucking idea because they've never shared that information. Uh, but we'll get, we'll get into the um, Indiana Jones failing and uh, you know why why that helps. It actually helps a lot. Uh, I, yeah, you, uh, <laughs> sure. There's innocent people involved and there's nice people involved and we don't want to, to hurt nice people who uh, are working at jobs. But again, if you're working for a shitty company, go find another company to work for. I did that all the time. I quit my job and found another company to work for. Uh, you're, I mean, in a lot of cases, you're not in some Pennsylvania town working for a coal mine. Okay. It's not the only gig in town. You can, you can go find something else. Uh, I have no sympathy for Disney, nor will I, especially after they have treated their audience over the last few years. A good portion of America helping fortify this country into one of the most divisive uh, times I've ever seen. Thanks, Disney. Uh, you fuck off. Do you for think thousands of years? No, you have. No, you right. have, dude. That's actually you. you you're a Cthulhu god. There was, there was a war 5,000 back that was pretty intense, but no, yeah, this is probably the worst. You think Timothy Chalmay is going to go I should it's have been Superman. Time. <laughs> it's Wonka time. <laughs> Don't want it. Don't want it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, Watch I the hate, okay. I hate this fucking dimension that we've fallen into. The I original film is is fucking perfect, dude. It's a it's a damn near yes. perfect movie with one of the greatest portrayals of any character ever. It was when I was watching it as a child, when they would play it on TV, it would uh, be like super entertaining and it kind of creeped me out. And that was what it was supposed to do. So to remake it, you can't even you can't even emulate that because uh, part of remaking something is to make it more sophisticated for the modern age. And you can't because this movie is a timeless classic. It fi <laughs> any kid can watch it at any fucking time. Uh, now, five years from now, ten years from now, one of the greatest movies ever made. Yes. It's been that way. When was it made? 70... Early 70s. Some, yeah, it was only two weird or three. Time. Know, something like that. It was a weird time. And it's still, still an absolute classic to this day. Yep. Yeah. What were you laughing at? Um, Elon Thrawn. Elon Thrawn? <laughs> yeah, I've, just, I've linked the picture. It's, it's Elon Thrawn. Uh, that just looks like Mar Mads Mikkelsen. Or Mar Wait, look, it's Mass. Mass. He's pronounced Mass Mickelson, by it's the fucking, way. Fucking is there a D in his name? Yes. I, it's fucking Maz. I don't give a fuck. I don't Wait, care you, about, about you. Right, though. You're, you're you Euro Mass trash putting right. yeah, you're yeah, Euro easy, trash man. putting extra you know fucking consonants in your fucking words. Fuck that shit. It's Mads Mickelson forever. Is That's that Elon? I'll pronounce horror correctly. Yeah. I'm sorry. And you know what? A, and there's no U in there to confuse you, Gary. <laughs> I'm stroke adjacent. You're going to make fun of that now? Okay. <laughs> yes, of course I am. <laughs> if you were in a wheelchair, I'd be taking a piss out of you. <laughs> you, you don't the, get up, Gary. Don't get yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gary doesn't stand for anything. <laughs> Gary's always sit down. Hey, He's Gary, will you, down on the will you come with me? I need, I don't want to fucking walk across the parking lot. <laughs> Yeah, I need Gary, to walk with me. Sorry, I mean, roll with me. Come on. Uh, do you guys have handicap parking over there in the UK? I'm sure you do, right? Yes. Okay. Oh. It's, called the, it's called the police. It's called the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, the car it's park. Called, sorry. It's called women drivers. Oh, also, yeah, I think you guys are moving. That's not Mads Mickelson. It's like his brother or whatever, right? Yeah, it's his brother. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's not Mads. It's, uh, fuck, I've, I had his name right in the. Uh, Derek. <laughs> Lars, Derek. it's Lars. Isn't Lars, it? Mikkelsen, Lars Mikkelsen, yeah. Yeah. He's Stregobor. He's Stregobor in uh, The Witcher. Mm. Who's in it for like five minutes? 
guys love that show, right? I watched oh, the oh, season God, the three. The trailer's out as well. The, tra the Wonka trailer's just come out as well. Oh, we can't watch that, but we can watch the Ahsoka trailer. We can watch it. Yeah, I've linked it. In so the, let's watch yeah, the Ahsoka the trailer, then we'll look at something good that was going around the internet yesterday that, you know, hey, hey, they got a costume right, right at the end of the superhero era, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> something fans... Something fans have wanted for fucking almost 25 years. And they finally, hey, let's put a costume on Wolverine. Maybe the fans will like that. And it, but it's a parody movie as well. And it's a multiverse movie. So it's, it's that and Wolverine's like, probably from a multiverse. That costume, it's not quite fully there. The first thought no, I had already was not. like, didn't he get fucking swole for this movie? Why are we covering up his arms? What's that okay, about? Here, let's see if I can. This is what it's supposed to look like. Okay. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to look like. I've seen, Actually, I've seen the fear because uh, it was mentioned. Like I hey, like the brown costume on. better. Yeah. Uh, so from the image that's released, yeah, he doesn't have that. his mask on. People are worrying there's going to be a fucking CG one. It, oh, like, it will be. And he touches it. He goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. no, dude, it's going to be an ironically meta movie. Another ironically meta metaver uh, a multiverse movie. I can't even say that. Say that ten times fast. Uh, that's what it's going to be. We'll talk about it in just a second. It's a Disney. You know, I, I've I loved Deadpool one, Deadpool two, pretty good. The kid was fucking annoying as fuck though. I didn't like the kid at all. All right, let's uh, let's see the trail. Okay, uh, are we going to be able to share this? Whoa. War. The war never war. changes. I'll or tell you, I'll, Lady Great Master, pause. Okay, I just want to test, see how fast you can pause. <laughs> All right. Rewind it from the start. Rewind it from the start. Start it over. I just wanted to see how good her skills were. <laughs> war is inevitable. War. One must destroy in order to create. Oh, oh no. Oh. Definitely Disney. We are no Jedi. Ray Stevens. It'll be cool to see him fucking around with a lightsaber. I'll enjoy that. R.I.P. I started the first of Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. Oh my what god, pause it. We're getting more of that. that Girl buses a whole we get uh, more of that trailer music goes <laughs> uh, here come the girl bosses let's go girl bosses power such as you've never dreamed I've spent most of my life fighting a war. That's why I'm trying to convince you to help me prevent another one. You and I both know who could help you with this. Pause. I have the solution. Kill the rest of the men. Wait, the final solution. <laughs> the final solution. <laughs> Star Wars, kill all men. And has there been a man <laughs> apart from Ray Stevens in this yet, by the way? There's still some men left. <laughs> Instead of a soaker, it's going to be whamming. It's going to go whamming. <laughs> I know. Hit play. Star Wars. Whamming. She stayed just as stubborn as ever. I bet your master found you difficult at times. Anakin never got to finish my training. I Anakin, name drop. Just like Ace. I walked away from Sabine. You never made things easy for me. Master. As a Jedi, sometimes you have to make the decision no one else can. But I'm counting on you to see this through. That's <gasps> haircut. Oh my god. Pause. 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 pause, 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 pause. <laughs> Go back a little bit. Sometimes I said pause. Regardless of our personal feelings. Lady Great Master. Pause. Pause. Maybe she's away from the screen. <laughs> Okay, go back a little bit. Don't hit play. Just go back about a minute and stay on pause. Okay, so Sabine cut her hair. That's so powerful. Yeah, now she looks like a boy. Now she looks or like a boy. Or a pixie cut in it, right? That's what they call it. Yeah, she's a Mandalorian, not a pixie. 
Well, it's just, I well, assume to keep it out of the I don't fucking man, know she's why. She's a fake Mandalorian. I, <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't watch the uh, animated shows. Rebels. Did, uh, uh, Rebel, well, yeah, Rebels was not so good. That's what I hear, yeah. Uh, not so good. If you mean not so good, like kind of stupid with like a couple of good episodes, Tom Baker voiced something in it. That was cool. Is that meant to be Ezra? Yeah, that's Ezra behind her mm -hmm. on the mural. Nice mur okay. mural, by the way. What is she in a kindergarten? <laughs> I think it's, it's supposed to like evoke how they looked in some animated thing that's not Rebels. Or... Yep. Well, yeah, that doesn't even look, look how they Rebels? look like in Rebels. Well, you know what? I have to admit, she looks like a kindergarten teacher that wants to talk to the kids about her pronouns. Well, she looks like somebody <laughs> Leslie Headland wants to fuck. Uh, yes. So that could be a kindergarten class. Okay, uh, hit play, please. Let's get this over. No! Sometimes we have to do what's right, regardless of our personal feelings. <laughs> Buckle up! If we don't stop Thrawn, everything will be in vain. You have no power. Anakin spoke highly of you. I'm not here. Wait, 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 so Sabine's oh, training to be a Jedi now? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why okay. not? It's not like wait, I care. What? It's a lot of work to do. Once a rebel, always a rebel. Oh, it's a spinny lightsaber, yay! Happened. Oh. Well, it's from it's from um, Clone Wars, actually. Um, is it? No, it's, it's it's from it's from Rebels. The spinning, the Inquisitor spinning. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, I like how it's clear, by the way, that like Mandalorian season three was so fucking rushed. Because look how many places they're going in this, and all the different things that'll happen. There's obviously story related things will be event. Then like it doesn't look like they're gonna go to Goofy Planet to talk to Jack Black while Lizzo does a dance or some shit. This looks like possibly an actual TV show. It looks like it's telling a story. I don't expect it to be good, though. But here's the thing. This is where we talk about fatigue. Uh, and I think the best example of it was Andor, uh, a show that I couldn't possibly get through if I tried, but people liked it, but not enough. Nobody fucking watched it. And by all accounts for the people who could get through that very drudging, boring show, said... Hey, had a good ending, had good characters, had a good story, but nobody watched it. A Star Wars product, but it's not a Star Wars product, is it? It's a Disney Star Wars product. But even so, the people who liked it, correct me if I'm wrong here, Morley. I'll do. It, but even the pe people that liked it said it, it kind of takes about three episodes to warm up. Yeah, it's and, um, it's a slow burn. I'm, I'm more than happy to concede that. It's just that... Uh, it's kind of unfortunate because people just don't have the patience to wait with how shit Star Wars has been, right? And I don't even blame them. If it had come out right after Rogue One, I think it would have been fine. Yep. So that's fatigue. First, first, uh, that, that, hang on, ass. That, that's fatigue. That is genuine fatigue mm -hmm. in your franchise. That's like it. Goodwill, bad will, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, yeah. I don't, you know, if, if the same people who made Dial of Destiny were like, we're going to make one more, I'd be like, for fuck's sake. And then it turns out it's like one of the greatest Indiana Jones movies ever. I'd just be like, yeah. All right. Is it? Is <laughs> like it? Because, you know, it's just like, because it's that meme, right? Of just, they keep shitting on your plate and then you're like, I don't want, I don't want the next meal. And they get their <laughs> ass ready. And you're like, I, I know it's going to be shit. They're like, how could you possibly know? Did you like Ahsoka as a character as? Um, when she first started in the Clone Wars, she wasn't likable, and then she became actually quite a likable character. And and even at the end of the Clone Wars, even season season seven, her ending I think is is really good. Um, I haven't gravitated at all towards Rosario Dawson's Ahsoka. Mm. It doesn't feel like Ahsoka for a start. It feels like a completely different character. So, but of course they're going with name recognition. It's Filoni, and Filoni wants all of his characters to uh, to keep him in in mm -hmm. uh, in in Gooseberries for the rest of his life. Um, but I I didn't I didn't like her in The Mandalorian at all. I didn't, I didn't get much of her at all, really. No, but there's nothing. 
there was nothing much to her, though. Well, rem like, she was on the screen with Luke fucking Skywalker, and they barely had any interesting dialogue. No. Think of all the things they would have to say to each other. This is coming from someone who didn't watch Clone Wars or Rebels or anything with Ahsoka in it. I know that she's Anakin's, like, longest-running apprentice who has severe issues in relation to him. That's Luke Skywalker. Yeah. It was unreal because, it, you know, me, me, Fringy Metal, and, and Rags watching that episode, we wouldn't have known that. We wouldn't have known any of it. She's just standing there like a fucking cutout. Hmm. That's Anakin's son. Yeah. Uh, did Kathleen That's Anakin's can... son right there. Yes. There should be some connection. Uh, also, did... Uh, I, it, uh... I didn't hear Kathleen Kennedy say this. I know there was a lot of people running with the headline. Did she really say she wanted to move past George Lucas's legacy or past George Lucas? Is that something she actually said? Can we find I, that? Uh, to, I know to say, she, she said that um, she doesn't want the old fans. She says we want... Yeah, she said that during Galaxy's fans. Edge. But We don't want these 50-year-old fans or whatever. I know she said. recently said that. Or people are saying she recently in public to say that is if she really said that, then she really is just retarded. Do you know what her her legacy is, Gary? Apart from failure at Lucasfilm, oh, I know being Did Steven Spielberg's fucking barista. Yep, that's your fucking legacy, mm, Kathy. Go get me some coffee. <laughs> I, I could use a cup of coffee right I now. Give I, I could She's do destroyed that. loads of shit. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, it's not the legacy, really, that you want to be. No, no. not really. So, okay, so but, she uh, she wants to move. She's ready to move it beyond George Lucas's creations. You haven't been able to create. Anything. <laughs> I know you haven't. You already did that. <laughs> you've already moved beyond uh, and below. I would say you've moved below George Lucas's Gosh. creations. <laughs> how much how much money would you guys be willing to kick in if it would guarantee us a audio commentary from George Lucas on Dial of Destiny? Oh, if they I crowdfunded got, I, that? Yeah. I got like, some. And, and, and he has to be 100% honest. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love, love to listen. But how much money would you be willing to pay for that? A couple of hundred quid? Probably more. <laughs> I'd probably be willing to pay quite a bit, to be honest with you. That would be a pretty glorious, especially oh him and Spielberg. Just oh him and Spielberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go. I'll go a grand for that, dude. <laughs> I, I'd crap on that shit. But they'd have they'd yeah. they'd have to be like we'd have to like you have to be honest. You have to be a hundred percent honest. Oh my God, oh, as what oh, the Jesus hell happened Christ, to you? That's what happened to you. What's going <laughs> on, as? Soka got me. Soka got me. <laughs> the Disney death ray got you. <laughs> yeah, Kathleen Kennedy attacked me with a coffee machine. She did. She threw coffee at you. Oh. No. All right. Well, I uh, while you're no. figuring that issue out, yeah. Uh, I, oh, go. I can't. I mean, I can't be bothered by. Are you're gonna watch it, right, Mueller? Of course, you're gonna so watch okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do EFAP uh, <clears throat> minis TVs on it. Yeah. I, we're not expecting. Much. It's more of a. Um, how do I put this? It's like, it's like your morning newspaper at this point. It's like, so <laughs> how is how how fucked is everything? And it's like local fire, you know, takes the lives of blah blah blah. You just watch a soaker. It's like this is what they're doing right now. Yep. Yep. So this is the future of Star Wars, is to move beyond George Lucas. And come out with a Ray movie, the Ahsoka show, which was, I mean, I'm not calling that their last hope because you cannot compare the character of Ahsoka to Obi-Wan Kenobi, to Luke oh. Skywalker. Um, you know, not a lot of people watch these shows comparatively to all the normies who have seen Star Wars. It's a, it's a minuscule number. Well, dude, like everything's shrinking. People, who's watching Secret Invasion? Oh, nobody. Nobody. No, nobody. nobody. Me and hey. Gary, that's it. it yes. <laughs> Oh my oh, God! Man. Is it bad? Is it bad, dude? Holy shit! Is it bad? When we find out that Nick Fury is just a, a an idiot that oh, got helped out by the scrolls. Yeah, we haven't. Have we talked about this on Real BBC? No, we I haven't. Have we can thing. though. No, go for it. Tell oh. me. Okay, so this is like it's it's actually a joke at this point. So I was watching it with Fringy, and we were like, first episode's already kind of assassinated Fury. It tells you obviously that he. You said you saw that one, right, As? Yeah. 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 So, as you know, and for those in chat who don't, they basically just tell you Fury, after Captain Marvel, abandoned the scrolls. He didn't do much with them. Like, episode one makes you think that he took them on and then ignored them until they became desperate. Which yep. is really out of character for Fury. It's like, why the fuck? 
He's not. He would get them soiled. And there's loads of planets in the galaxy. We already know that from all the other films we've seen. So you know, just just this doesn't make any sense. Episode two gets way better because I actually thought that you know. I'm so naive sometimes when I'm watching these fucking model model products. I'm like, they're not gonna, Sweet they're not gonna rewrite the history again, right? Like <laughs> they wouldn't take a character that we know for X reason. We know that they're powerful or skilled in a particular direction, and then they just rewrite it. They wouldn't do that. Yeah, but no. Um, Fury's in trouble, and Ta- Talos is like kind of ignoring him or being a bit of a bitch, and he's like, uh, "I'll help you if you admit you're helpless without me." And so Fury's like, I'm helpless without you, which is already a bit of an awkward start because it's Fury. It's like, nah, you wouldn't say that, but okay. Then we find out the scrolls on Earth are very mad at Fury, and a lot of them are there secretly because Talos brought them in a million scrolls. Um, by the way, yeah, a million, one million. Secretly integrated into our society at many levels of power. We have no idea. And I was happy to see that Fury reacts angrily to that. I was like, good. The show somehow recognizes that that's fucking terrible and terrifying. Anyway, he says, Talos, like, why didn't you. Uh, and why didn't you tell me? And he was like, because if I told you, you would put all of them to work. And they gave us this flashback sequence in the second episode about how Fury would take the scrolls and he would give them like agent roles as spies. So he's known about aliens, by the way, since like obviously Captain Marvel, which is still fucking up the Avengers, where he says that Thor was the first time an alien came to Earth. But they don't give a shit, so whatever. Um, but yeah, so we find out like, oh, so Fury's been using scrolls for like spy missions. For decades? That's pretty crazy. And then we get a scene to really bring it home as Talos explains the only reason that Fury is seen as a great spy is because of all the work that the Skrulls did. It wasn't him. It was the Skrulls doing the spying, collecting the data, and giving it all back to Fury. Fury took the credit for all the Skrulls' work. Yep. Oh, and there's three episodes to go, Mahler. <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> So what the fuck was was Fury doing? Being a shit spy. They literally say like he climbed the ranks in Shield because of the scrolls. Yeah, he had a team of scrolls who could shape shift that were working through and manipulating Shield to put him in charge. The badass so, spy that was Nick Fury. He's a fake. He's, he's a, a fake. Fraud. He's a fraud. He's a total fraud. Why is he even? Why is he even employed then? Uh, well, he's been faking it. He's all, been faking all it. All the times he does all that information he collects. That's all the scrolls. It's not him. Yep. And he uses it as leverage. Yep. So he tricked his way into the Avengers, probably used scrolls for that too. Who no. fucking knows? I don't know. Don't care. He got his eye scratched out by a kitty cat. Yeah, it's, they, fuck- it's complete, so to speak. The assassination is done yeah. now. So if you think about, let's bring this back to Ahsoka, when you're like, oh, it might be just a fun Ahsoka story and it won't do any more damage to Luke Skywalker. It existing does damage to Luke Skywalker. Because Luke Skywalker is alive during this time, by the way. And we got yeah, Thrawn gonna, running gonna around. Take away from that. We've already we already know for a fact that she wants to annihilate Luke's legacy. We already know that. Yeah. So, like, uh, what do you a, do at this point? Year. Like, uh, what? Kathleen Kennedy? Yeah. Uh, um, she is the single best example now uh, in the history of Hollywood of failing upward, and oh, yes. uh, and and reputation being uh, a bigger currency than your actual creative ability. Oh, she's been a great producer. Yeah, her name has been on a lot of stuff with her husband, Frank Marshall. She's been attached to a lot of stuff from Steven Spielberg and a lot of other great uh, men out there. And she's taken a lot of credit. She was handed a fucking job by George Lucas. You want to talk about privilege? And she's sucked on it at it from day one. From like day one, she has been shit at her job. And she's had it for 10 years some people mentioned i didn't even think about it like i guess the scrolls didn't notice that hydra controlled shield the whole time i guess they kind of (laughs) i guess the scrolls kind of forgot about hydra (laughs) it's so fucked every every time they rewrite the fucking history it was driving me nuts it was funny um these scrolls hand him some stuff at the beginning of episode three as a flashback and they say something like this should uh this should control drake off for now it's like drake Fuck off. <laughs> like, you're giving him all this information to help him deal with, like, the Black Widow stuff. Like, as if the scrolls had anything to do with that. You're just rewriting everything. Yeah. For what reason? For what purpose? Make this show have stakes. The scrolls, mm-hmm. it, it makes sense as. The scrolls have been here the whole time. They've taken over the British Prime Minister, like, the leader of NATO. 
Like they, they've got all these positions of power and this crazy fucking psycho wants to blow up all of Earth in order to get rid of humans because they were mean to him. Uh, how did Disbrew? Uh, it sounds gay. Uh, Disbrew described it as man wants to, or scroll wants to commit genocide because a man broke a promise to him when he was nine. <laughs> so fucking stupid, man. And it's, it shouldn't have, it never should have happened. Why would Fury not just drop him off on any of the, you know what they could do is drop him off on nowhere. Be like, hey, Guardians, we got a whole bunch of uh, adult scroll people. You've got a whole bunch of kids that need parents. There you go. <laughs> like, it should work out. You know what comes through in this show is is just the disdain for humanity that the writers have. <laughs> and and maybe yeah. it's from being in that L.A. culture. I, I'd probably have a disdain for humanity if I had to live in L.A. at this point. Uh, but uh, that's that's I mean, you can leave. And that's also something you brought in yourself. That's that's your dystopia that you created Los Angeles. Uh, and yeah, it, it's just there's a general disdain. And, and it's that Marvel morality we have seen over the past few years, Mahler, that stems from WandaVision uh, or, or, or Hollywood morality that we saw in Wonder Woman 84, <laughs> you know, where it's, they just don't notice she raped a guy. They just didn't like notice. It, it, like, I don't even think they realize, like, a million scrolls going all over Earth for 15 years unchecked. It's like, we've lost. They've the, already got everything you're right. You're done. Like, you're done. We must have. Like, the, how can you fuck that up over 15 and, years? And like, how... And how did they lose to the Kree? How how do you fuck when you could shape shift? How did you lose to the Kree? I don't know. Is there a way to check it? Uh, well, there's an, ex there's an explanation, but yeah. Uh, for one, they're an advanced race too. They have ships. <laughs> they yeah, have things uh, we don't it's, have. It's essentially been confirmed at this point that Rhodey is a scroll, and we don't know how long he's been a fucking scroll. Which what? God, I hope since yeah. Terrence Howard, that would retcon something really stupid. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> they they really did like everybody in universe was like you look different it's like hey don't point that out it'll be racist or something they're like oh okay jeez let's just accept that this is roadie now <laughs> this is a scroll some people have theorized that it'll be from civil war where he took the spinal injury and actually died and then a scroll took his place i was just like fuck me that's gonna that's gonna change up all of everything yeah the, the, you could have had fun with this story maybe uh, like maybe directly after Thanos, you just do the secret invasion. Uh, you see the power vacuum. They come in. They're supposed to be bad guys anyway, and you do it with superheroes, and you could have had fun. But that's that's the other thing is they're taking these ideas that could have been fun and, like, making them the worst way possible. Like, hey, let's not and put like, any if superheroes. Were, if it were planned even remotely, right, you have, like, a moment in fucking Avengers where Maria Hill gets injured and she's got – you see like a bit of green blood and you're like, what the fuck? And it's, you know, everything's happening. There's a battle. Nobody can take it. And then you just like, oh, that's kind of weird. And then like by Age of Ultron, you drop a hint and maybe someone's doing something somewhere. And then eventually like, yeah, you got a couple people who are scrolls and that's a whole thing. But like they haven't done this at all. Captain Marvel was already retconning everything. And now this is retconning that. It's, it's fucking hilarious that we've gone on for so long now that they're like shitting on the work that shits on their work. It's like this pyramid of shit. And it's because they don't pay attention to it. They wanted to do this connected universe, and it was done right in the beginning because it was loosely connected. It wasn't too many dots you had to go around. And and now the blip fucking that was such a that well, dude, killed the Marvel. Biggest, <laughs> the biggest fuck up they ever had was stuff like, oh, the president has been kidnapped. Don't you think like Cap would have been alerted about this? Don't you think that some other people should be involved, like Hawkeye, and it's like, uh, they're busy. But these days, it's like, the whole world, you have, like, Ant-Man, Wakanda Forever, Thor Love and Thunder, and uh, MOM. All of them have revolutionary technology spells and, like, incredible advancement <clears throat> and all these different kinds of things, but none of them have any awareness of each other as, as films in the same universe. None of them know they exist. Guardians of the Galaxy introduced those med packs that can save you from any injury. It's like, Jesus. Imagine Fury had that when Maria got shot. Right, oh. but oh well, we don't, we don't like, we're not even gonna remotely pretend. Like if the scrolls, if they use the scrolls to retcon the entire MCU, like every, <laughs> they're just all scrolls. That that might. Oh, help. dude, that I would do help. it. I, I would, would do, do that. Mephisto instantly. Uh, yep. Combo them up. Fuck it. No, but uh, add, instead, add Patrick Duffy in the shower. Uh, Brie Larson wakes up and it's all a dream, and Patrick Duffy's in the shower. So they made Nick Fury a sad old man who has decided to take on the scrolls by himself because mm -hmm. he can't trust anybody. 
that's the logic. They didn't do that very well, though, did they, Gary? No. Every single person he meets in that show, he never tests them for whether they're a scroll. Nope. And it fucks him over. He gets someone killed because of that. He he likes to talk a big game, though. He's like, nobody calls me Nick, and that's how I recognized you. Are, like you're in trouble, whatever. And that everyone's like, oh, isn't it amazing writing that Rody earlier called him Nick? Like, no. <laughs> that's like basic as shit nobody ever calls me nick i was i was half tempted to control f all the fucking screenplays at the mcu and be like did anyone ever call him nick <laughs> like, well okay you can go to shuri in wakanda the smartest girl avar and uh, you know they live in a uh they have a wall around their country the ethno state so they couldn't have been infiltrated with any scrolls i'd ask her to make a scroll detector or you just trust everybody or just trust every, just trust every, and hope they call you Nick <laughs> if you want to find out. It's so stupid as well because you can just cut off their hair and it'll either frazzle or because like scrolls don't have hair, so it's, it won't stay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they showed us like they have different blood. If you cut out some of their blood, it'll bleed red for a moment, and then it'll turn like green. Or and, it's an and easy test. I remind you, do not uh, what Marvel, what a lot of these, even DC to a certain extent, they they rely on convoluting. Stuff from the comic books, <laughs> Gary. We, we hang on. We have to establish what the scrolls are in universe, in universe. So yeah. I, I don't give a shit what the scrolls are in the comic books, and neither does Disney Marvel. Sorry, as go ahead. No, no, no. There's a <clears throat> there was a little show on TV once upon a time. Once upon a time, what was it called? It was called Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I recall this show. Okay, I do. Uh, they have this 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 enemy yes they and, do and uh the enemy had a special power uh, i think it was changing uh, they changed right the, yeah they, they had a weird name something to do with changing change change, change. Zombies. yes zombies and uh there was a little test that they would do gary to see whether or not they were a change yes there was can you remember that, what that was? That test was, well, they had their little pot, right? They had to have their mm -hmm. pot in their vicinity. They had to have the pot, but they also would cut. Cut you open, yes. Cut you. And uh, it was an easy way to see who was a changeling and who wasn't a changeling. If the scrolls, having only watched the first episode and I didn't, it was fucking abysmal. And the Star, if the and Star Trek. Have a different color fucking blood. Which they do. And just take a just take a, a needle, yes, needle and a well, it's funny referencing that. We can just go to the goat, right? The thing. There's a whole scene where they figure out fire is the best thing against the thing, and that the thing itself is made up of individual cells. Ultimately, that all have their own self, like instinct sort of thing. So they will betray their host, so to speak, to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great scene fucking iconic and it's yeah. a really smart way to do it the faculty the scene is much goofier and lower level compared to the thing of course and what are they doing now that the, the monsters in that uh, hate uh, no they love water so they hate being dried out so uh the main character has like uh drugs like a, a form of coke i think it is and uh it just the aliens fucking hate it so you have to take like a snort of it to prove you're not an alien and it works it's like this isn't a lot of writers have come up with different ways for this to think, but the, the scrolls in this, they're just ignoring that shit. They're like, nah, it's fine. All of the characters, Nick fucking Fury is just like, I just trust you. I didn't see you for an hour and you're acting a little weird, but I trust you. I hate it so much. I, I think I said, well, these are stupid movies, but... people. You're only as smart as your writers and the writers are fucking dumb. Hmm. That's it's why they're a... on strike. <laughs> But it's what makes the, the ending of the thing so fucking effective is that nobody saw Childs for what, like an hour or something. It's like, so is he still human? It's like, we don't know. Could be. Not be. Yeah, the writers are on strike, remember? <clears throat> <laughs> and yet nothing has changed. Nothing when has changed. We don't get paid enough to not come up with anything original. I know. We need to be paid more to vandalize more franchises. Mm. We're worried about AI because it can actually write better than we do. <laughs> so. It takes it takes a lot of effort to be this shit. It, it you know it does. They're being super creative with their signs and they're having like pizza parties and everything. Uh, this is the fight of their life, ladies and gentlemen. Writing is at stake. 
Dude, the fight of their life is to get to the front of the queue at fucking Starbucks for a mocha chaka fucking latte skinny. Or mocha chaka. <laughs> Don't mock the mocha chaka. Don't mock the mocha chaka, man. Don't it's pretty good. I don't even know what it is. Mark the Mark and Chaka. Oh my God! Yes, it's uh, it, it's Secret Invasion. I, I it got lost in the shuffle, you know. Um, at Strange New Worlds, dude. As if you were watching Strange New Worlds, holy no. shit! Your mind would just. If you're a fan of Spock, this is. I mean, they prison rape Spock in this show. They do. I mean, it's it's not just vandalization. It is a gang prison rape. They make him autistic and then the butt of jokes mm. these are fucking and that's akiva goldsman so stranger yeah. worlds i might get around to it because no. holy shit well i gotta make a video about it because like what they do to spock is horrific it's freaking horrific and people yeah, are right. going it's not that bad it's not that, that it's fucking terrible it is right I, I back to the me, old shit news to what's, tell you. what's that i watched three seasons of batwoman I understand that. That was a choice. And now I've got terminal brain cancer. That was a choice. That's why I dipped out of that show. <laughs> I, 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 well, I, I, I physically can't do this anymore. I reviewed you're, the first you're three episodes. I, I reviewed. The show is built for people with brain cancer. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's. So you probably had it already. Oh yeah. Chicken or egg? Ah! Chicken or egg? <laughs> Which no. came first, the Batwoman or the brain cancer? I, I don't know. Well, it took brain cancer to write it, so maybe... Or well, brain cancer to brain... watch it. <laughs> um, my brain cancer, full yeah. brain cancer. Yeah, brain cancer. I reviewed the first three episodes of the first two seasons, and that was... I I can't do it. I just yeah, like... I, need to, I need to get a tattoo damaged across right? my forehead. Well, because those were... Remind me that I'm damaged. Remind me how long were the seasons again? 20, 20 episodes. Oh, yeah. And then I think the but, third season Okay, was but Bat see, here's the deal with Batwoman. Batwoman was it's a character from the the golden age that they mm -hmm. brought back specifically. This is like almost patient zero. Dan Dildoio brought him back. I don't like Dan yeah. Didio. Dan Dildoio fucking brought her into the comic books specifically to be a lesbian superhero and nothing else. She was yes. a lesbian superhero. They got a good cover artist to do the cover art. And people bought it for the cover art because a lot of people buy comics for the cover art and don't even bother reading them. And uh, that was it. She was lesbian superhero. So whatever. But was I mean, and, and I was going to sit through 22 episodes I, of that shit. I would say but, angry lesbian superhero. Oh, yes. I, I would agree with you. But this is fucking Spock. This is Spock. Hmm. This is one of the greatest fictional characters of all time. Greatest American fictional characters of all time. And they're prison raping him. And it's it is fucking disgusting. So I think it's worth talking about. I might have to suffer a little bit through strange new worlds. Uh especially like after Picard season three, it, it just again it shows you how dumb and and filled with hubris, sheer fucking hubris, uh Hollywood is. When they get something good, it's generally an accident at this point. And then they go, yes. Well, we got this now. All that momentum from Picard will go and uh Fuck over Spock for an entire season. You know. Well, uh, the costumes are bright. The costumes are bright, and they have, like, a couple of hot chicks in it. And then a couple... And th that's how I see that any appeal to, like, source-accurate costumes is, is, like, meant to blind people. Yeah. Of any kind. Like, it's just, like, it's like, see, we got that. It's like, yeah, but what about all of everything else? What about the writing and the characters? Yeah. Hey, Wolverine's got a costume now, so everything's gonna be fine. Mm. Oh my god. And look, dude, it's a it's an improvement. I'm I'm not gonna get all hung up on the sleeves. It's fucking they should have done this twenty five years ago. <laughs> okay. Look, they got I'm surprised they even have the shoulder, you know, the yeah. shoulder pad thing. Yeah. So now I prefer the brown and yellow costume. Gaijin look Wolverine. Better, Gaijin. But at least it's there. Um, and they're they're fighting on a beach, and this is going to be another multiverse meta ironic movie. Can't wait, Mahler. Right? I mean, it's funny, right? It's already tired, and this isn't going to be out until next year, is it? No, uh, it's it. Was yeah, it so, no, no. It's it's it is due to release May two thousand twenty four now. 
Wow. Yeah, they're rushing this one. 11 months and they're and they're in principle right now. So, uh oh, and, and they and Ryan and Ryan Reynolds cannot improvise. Cannot improvise at all. Now, uh people will go, "Well, they can cheat on the set. There's WGA people on the set watching." There's little spies. That's how we will shout and... scab if he uh if he improvises. Yeah, there's there's uh uh Why humans. can't why why doesn't he just say I don't care? I'm actually I've actually got a bit of talent. So I don't care about you untalented fucks. Did you... someone say that he the a loophole is that he could do everything through ADR that that would be allowed? So like they could have slots recorded. Okay, so there's so he ad libs like really secretly has a little sticky notepad and goes writes down the ad lib. Well, it could be that, but <laughs> <I> just you <laughs> know you have keep like track. it's an you ad have something lib. happens and then he like looks over at it and then moves his mouth, I, but you can't quite see what the words are, and then you can make that up in ADR. If the strike ends and they go back for reshoots, and they have enough time, sure, that will add uh, hundred million to the budget. So that's pretty much in yeah. line with Disney. Yeah. yeah, that's what they do. Remember, what's the budget on this? Oh, two hundred million. It's a what? Disney movie. That uh, I that would be my guess is two hundred million. Uh, the first Deadpool, by the way, made for I believe seventy million dollars. If mm -hmm. that, yeah. Um. So my guess is two hundred million. I'd like to you see the mask. Oh God, that's a monkey's poor thing right there. That's going to be CG. Let's just let's. let's I'm not sure. Maybe... I'm not sure it's even going to be on. We'll yeah, we'll see. But um, it'll be on for a second. About, uh, it was a Patrick Wilson interview, and he mentioned that they recently did more reshoots for Aquaman, like weeks ago. Oh my god! It was it get rid of Amber Heard? <laughs> Why are you making reshoots to a film that's already dead? From what I heard, and I think it's like vaguely implied by his interview, it's it's uh, shooting scenes that help it fit better with what's going to happen next with DC with James Gunn and stuff. Like like acknowledging it or something. So Nobody they're gonna cares. oh no they're gonna put in a stinger leading up to like uh yeah, so a, another that, universe yeah. yes they're, they're absolutely I would I would do that I would hi you've already had your multiverse movie in the Flash I understand Nobody cares. as as is asking like good questions here I, I totally yes, agree is. as is asking imagine good... how much those fucking reshoots just added to the budget. Uh, probably so probably 10, 10 million 10 may, maybe more 10 a 15 as is asking legitimate questions uh for, to the universe that we're all thinking nobody's gonna watch this fucking movie so they're like desperately so it's exactly what they did with black adam doing they, you know, this is a piece of shit we need to get henry cavill back so they're doing the same thing with aquaman i'm telling you man the the, the dcu is doa dude it's Dude, still funny it's to look DOA. at in retrospect that Black Adam was more successful. I know! <laughs> and we were like, and I'd rather watch Black I mean, Adam, to be honest Black with you. <laughs> I know, well, it's yeah, like, I mean, that, oh, it's so to cool. be I real. I twice at the cinema. I'm sorry. I dodged that bullet. Look, I think... If Christopher Reeve came back from the fucking dead right now and, and played Superman in Aquaman 2, I don't think anyone would still be interested. No, I think they killed it. It's dead. It's it's so dead. And they he's not killed it the moment they announced James Gunn's universe. It killed all of the other films. I don't know dead. what they were thinking. Right then. I think they no, wanted uh, to one up Marvel and they didn't think it through. Or they just didn't care in their tax write offs. I mean these well, do you think do you think it was like announced this before Guardians comes out to like cripple it a little bit? Because get James Gunn is like he's ours, by the way. And he's gonna be, or maybe as a form of marketing to be like, if you like Guardians, yeah, I think it's more of a form of marketing. And now that I've read multiple articles and talked to people over years and years, I was under the impression that hey, some of these people are really smart, they can't be this dumb. Yes, they can. Yes, <laughs> they, they can. They are this they dumb. <laughs> they didn't just announce James, hey, James Gunn's gonna take over running DCU EU going forward. They didn't do that. They announced James Gunn, and then they put him in front of a camera to tell you everything that he's going to do before any of this shit came out. And what he's going to find out is the same thing Kevin Feige found out. Half that shit you announced is get delayed or canceled. It's so dumb. Just announce a Superman movie. That's uh, 
And then, but like, his universe yeah. is so underwhelming. That announcement I know. was so underwhelming. Okay, th there's, there's no not, gr no he Green Arrow. His own universe before he killed the fucking other one. There's no fucking Green Arrow. There's no Flash. These are these are no. these are main members of the Justice League, and they are missing. But no there's an authority. There's an authority. Mm, yeah. Super interesting to think that because Gary, I think you're absolutely right. If he had made that video, talked about his plans, and only announced Superman Legacy, and that was or tomorrow, whatever the fuck it was called. If he just announced that, and that was it, I feel like we'd all be like, okay, yeah. Well, we, I mean, it, admittedly, we did fucking stupid webcams now. Um, admittedly, we all said just make one good movie. Yep. Thank you. But now and he came out with his eight year plan, eight year, 10 year. <clears throat> Who fucking cares how many fucking years, dude? And there's going to be two Batman now, like uh, Matt. Uh, what's his oh, name? Matt Reeves oh, is going to have, have the new one. Gary Matt Reeves is going to have his own fucking Batman universe along with the James yes, Gunn Batman yes, universe. And yes. neither of them are going to take place in television, which I was, you know, we were talking, we were talking about Dean Kane the other day. As, and I'm like, you know who's been the most successful superhero in television history? Fucking Superman. Superman's had, had multiple successful series. Nothing is even close. But we've got one fucking Batman show what, with Batman in it, okay? In one fucking Batman show in the 60s. And it's a comedy. And it's a fucking comedy. Like, how does that even happen? I mean, like, Batman outsells Superman uh, 5 to 1, 10 to 1 in comic books, but, man, Superman kicks ass on television. He does. We've had Lois and Clark. We've had Ty Tyler Hocklin in Superman at the moment, and that's the only thing that's been fucking renewed in the CW. And we've had Smallville, if we can add Smallville to that, because that's the life of Clark Kent. Massively popular. Batman... The no, the, every fucking Batman show that comes out, he's fucking dead. The Adventures of Superman with George <laughs> Reeves. Every every old man my age grew yeah. up watching that show. Yeah. He's oh. Either dead or he abandoned Gotham. That's that's the two options you have in the Batman TV show right now. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, but even in Batwoman, right? In Batwoman, I don't. I, you saw it all, didn't you, Morley? We haven't actually finished season three, but we're gonna. Oh, have you have you come to the ghost of Bruce Wayne yet? Oh no, you're what? About, you're talking about when he visits uh, Luke. Luke, when his Luke head. gets shot and has his. You're, you're talking his about that when, experience. when Luke said he's not sure he wants to live in the world that's so racist. Yes. Yes, I've seen that. that yeah, was... where he, he was shot by a racist that doesn't use racist slurs. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the then became Discount Bane. Wait, oh, he was in. <laughs> he was in Titans too. <laughs> Batman, <laughs> Batman was in Titans, played by uh, old ass Jorah Mormon. No, he wasn't. Yeah, Bruce Wayne was in. Bruce Titans. Wayne was it? Yeah. There was a oh. hey. There was a scene. There was a quick scene with like a cheap ass costume that I think they rented to Batwoman for a minute. <laughs> they... Well, actually, actually, Batman was in Titans season one when they didn't have an actor cast, and so yes. he was seen. He was seen in a couple of scenes yes. in Shadows. I remember. I reviewed it. But it was also um, one of the scenes was a was a a a fake scene because yeah. it was a what could could have been scene. Oh my god! Why did you have to remind me that he became you fake? You started scene? it. <laughs> you asked me what I have, if I remember. I this. told you, Mola, I've got brain cancer. I do too. It cancels out. Oh my god. Oh my back, god! Yeah, but Luke's Luke Stagger. Go <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read some soups, and so we gotta talk about. <laughs> we gotta talk about Indiana Jones's failure and why it's important. Because I teased that earlier. I teased that earlier, but first. And now here it comes. And now here it comes. Well, I think it's it's a, a teaser again. It's a good thing. I think it's a really good thing. How can you root for something to fail? It's going to ruin movies. No, movies aren't going anywhere. Comic books aren't going anywhere. Novels aren't going anywhere. They need to be decentralized. Uh, you know you know why you occasionally find a good novel once in a while still? Uh, the writers aren't unionized. That's one of the reasons. It's a gig economy. The good writers have to go out and write good books for them to sell. Uh, minor 69er. 
for 20 British pounds. Cheers. <laughs> 69. Uh, hail the chat and the 199. Question mainly for Gary and Az. <clears throat> In my best William Defoe accent, I can't do a William Defoe, and I'm not going to ask Az to do an impression. Uh, really? I'm s- Dude, I'm awesome at impressions. I, I know you are, but you know, don't do that stuff for free, Az, okay? <laughs> uh, do, you, <laughs> do you insure your comic and toy model collections with a specialist insurance company? Uh, no, because they're frauds. They, they, there's no way in hell that they'll ever, uh, in my opinion, there's no way in hell they could ever pay that off because a regular insurance pay, uh, company would pay that off. If you have records yes. and every, you would have to have records and pictures of everything you own. Then you have to prove how much uh, it, it's individually worse than what the ins- worth and the insurance company will come in with the lowest common denominator. You'll get, you might get some money, but it'll be nowhere near. Uh, if your whole collection goes up in flames, it goes up. It goes up in flames. I would say with your Marvel key books, with your key books, uh, put them in a fireproof safe that is in the foundation or a safe deposit box that's big enough, but that costs money. That costs lots of money. I mean, my, my storage is insured. Uh, uh, my, so my storage unit of toys is insured. Everything else that's in the house, it's on the, ho- it's on the home insurance. Yeah. Just and, on the home and, insurance. And if the storage facility goes up in flames, ads will get pennies on the dollar. Of his collection that's just that's just the way it goes i got a lot of pictures though if it makes you feel better i got a lot of pictures sure but i i kind of see it as just you know put it under your homeowner's insurance but a lot uh, collectibles insurance i kind of see as a scam that's always been my view on it uh slade lawton for 1999 gary today i turned 22 and it's hard to believe what a little youngster you are what's up little tyke What's Why up, little guy? Show off. What's up, kiddo? <laughs> hey. Oh, fuck yourself. 20. <laughs> 22. I turned 22 today. Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yourself rubbing it in my life. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, as my brother and I would rather be British soldiers at Breed's Bunker Hill than eat pineapple pizza. Wow. Okay. I'd rather eat pineapple pizza. Good for you. I'll, I'd, I'll take all your pineapple pizza, yeah, buddy. Yeah, it's more pineapple pizza for me. We appreciate your sacrifice. We do. Yeah. Dirt is king or DRT is king. Not sure. Uh, For $20. Thank you very much. Uh, Gary, you have uh, seen my adventures with Superman. No, and I won't. I won't. Uh, The first two episodes felt very Superman with a very Voltron legendary defender style. And with it being early Superman career, it's understandable to have young Lois and Clark. Uh, Lois, who looks like a boy, boy. Uh, and Superman, who changes like Sailor looks Moon, like a, a gay man <laughs> who acts and looks like a gay gentle folk. Yeah, and changes like you know Sailor what? Moon. Watch All Star Superman. It's on uh, HBO Max. The animated it has an all- orgasm when he changes. Uh, it's really good. Yellow Flash can back me up on that. And you'll told never me to guess, it. Gary, who who uh, is responsible for that show. The oh. same person who is responsible for the She-Ra show on Netflix. Oh, that chick? One of the right. No, not the showrunner. I'm one sorry. Of the writers. That is also them? The writers. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, not the not the that them, not the that them it. <laughs> uh, one of the writers. So it's like the one of the writers of She-Ra is 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 doing this. That's why everything's a self insert for them. Yeah, and I know it's like Americanized anime. Right, that's what it looks like to me. No, it just looks gay. In other words, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm not a fan. I am not a fan anime. of all anime. I like some. I like some, but I'm not a fan of all of it. Okay. He's judging you, weeaboos. I'm not. Yes. You like what you like. I'm just not a fan of all of it. Understand that. Uh, I like some of it though. Some of it's really cool. Some. Of you want to watch? Not so cool. If you've never seen, I don't Perfect like every comic Luke. book. Watch Perfect Blue. I think What's your you're favorite some... anime as Cowboy Bebop. Mm. What about number two? Um, I'd say Ghost in the Shell. Mm, that one's good. And I'll only ask for one more. Uh, Perfect Blue has got to be up there as well. Oh. Fair enough. That'd be my top three. I might play around with the order, apart from definitely Cowboy Bebop number one. Oh, my God. He's going to go on for 20 minutes, and you asked him for three. (laughs) I just... 
Enough. <laughs> Gary, he asked me for multiple. He said three. <laughs> okay, you said three. We're good. Nice. Pi 3766 for 50 British pounds. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's the closest you're going to get to the Doctor Who top five set. Uh, we're eventually going to do the Doctor Top 5. It's for rainy day. We got it in the bank. We're trying to... to we are, we are going to be people in chat who are eventually like, there was never even a t first five. Everyone's lying. I've already, you do, like okay, by it. the way, I've already told you two of my top five in the top ten because they were the same as some of their earlier episodes. So you've already heard them, two of mine, but you haven't heard my number one, which will be controversial. That's a tease, too. That's a tease, too. Let's see if uh, nobody's gotten back to me yet. It's as controversial as The Authority is the second movie to come out of James Gunn's DC Universe. No, yes. not that controversial. No, not even close. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. <laughs> Had to think about that for a minute, but no. Uh, it will It will probably piss off some classic Who fans. Uh, Brock has gifted 10 Nerdrotic memberships for $50. Thank you, Brock. Okay, now back to Pi, 3766. Wait, so th uh, with the scrolls, that means there was yet another secret faction in yes. S.H.I.E.L.D. manipulating everything around the world? Yes. Uh, like Hydra, the Black Widows, what? and the Ten Rings. Like, who isn't secretly working for someone else? <laughs> Is there wouldn't anyone that, normal? <laughs> wouldn't that make some of the scrolls Hydra? Yes. yes. Don't know what's happening anymore. There's literally what you need is the image of the president's about to sign a thing, and then a scroll is like, "Yes, Mr. President, sign the contract." And then someone pulls a gun on the scroll. It's a Hydra agent, and they're oh, like, "Aim, no, aim is going to be in there too." Thing who's pretending to be a shield. And then the Ten Rings agent is pulling a gun on them, and they're like, "No, you have to sign the contract." Do they go the hail Shang scroll? Thing, well, they would all possibly because that's the variables put on it. But it, it goes all the way up to like the kevin robot from she hulk like that's the ultimate controller below that would be kang and all of his timeline shit it sounds this sounds fucking awesome dude. this below sounds that so is, fucking is, is, good oh wait i PBA. fucking i love i fucking love it <laughs> 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 It's really good. It's so, Why are you saying this? So the thing is, in the comic books, there are all of these organizations, but they make it work because you're telling a story over decades in thousands of issues. So it, it and Marvel was never perfect, but they tried. They used to put little little boxes on the bottom, and this happened in Amazing Spider-Man 127. You know, like they would try to keep track. They they would do a good job. Marvel has to just make what thirty movies, and they've completely lost the plot. Like. Absolutely, completely lost the plot. They've I, taken they've taken your beautiful Lego, right, and they've just dropped it on the floor. Uh, whatever you fucking put together, like, <laughs> at all, nothing has been planned. Like them making Rhodey a scroll is clearly just like a thing where they're like, "Fuck it, I don't know, Rhodey, yeah, that'll work." They probably were gonna make Maria Hill a scroll, and then they were like, the actress was like, "I don't want to be in this anymore." And they were like, "Oh shit, uh, just kill her." And I liked Arnold, Maria Hill a lot. Is coming out. What was yeah, that? So. And Rhodey's the one of the main characters well, it, is oh, not the main as, character as, in that. As they're adapting a major Iron Man story arc without, without Iron, Iron Man. Iron Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, and now, for reference, and now as, the second one, Rhodey, he's a fucking scroll. But as, <laughs> it might be that, that he's got the real Rhodey captured somewhere. Yeah, they've got him captured. Be. That's what I think. It could also be that um I clearly that, need a that bigger that fucking gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could also be that that is just that's been Rhodey for like fifteen years that he is it just a scroll. Be. How could you tell it, it was Rhodey? How could you tell it wasn't Rhodey? He could walk. That's the thing. Well, so that, I think he actually can now, but uh, those guys like, like without any kind of shit, but um, they say that Rhodey's known about scrolls for like 15 years, which takes us back to before Iron Man, right? Uh, or is it, it's around that. It's 15 year mark. It's something like that. I think that they deliberately said that so that they can argue that the Rhodey we've known this whole time truly is just scroll Rhodey or some fucking shit. We'll find out. Yeah, if Terrence, Howard, well, if Terrence Howard comes in, that'd be so fucking. If you read the comic book, which is nothing like this story. Stuff like that. Happens. In all fairness, none of the stories have been anything like the no, stories. No, it's it's like 
Um, oh, it's like how they adapted Witcher season three. They said it's book accurate except without any context. So it's essentially well, just Easter eggs. They yeah yeah they take a line from the from the book and they put it in the show, but the and, context isn't right and, and they, it doesn't make sense. And it makes no sense and it loses the emotional like, impact. No, yeah. She called her. She called Siri ugly. Yep. And he, so, but the chat, but most people just be like, why, why is, why is Yennefer calling Siri ugly? It's from the book. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I but the context around it hasn't been established for her to get. Clarkson's Farm season two. What was that? I watched Clarkson's Farm season two on my on my what? own. Well, but you could have called really me. Good. Why didn't you call me? Did you call me? I, did you I ping totally me? Did. Did yeah, you call? You're all you all missed calls. You see them. They're all they're all there. But anyway, that was really fucking good, and I look forward to season three. It's now. amazing. <laughs> so uh, I was talking to Mrs. Nerdrotic last night because a lot of people have asked this, and I think we should do it, and I should we should try to do it before I go over to the UK and visit Clarkson's farm. Um, I think we should do like a EFAP or something on it, a special on it. I think oh, as that would like, like the, as would uh, watch or... it. And uh, we could just talk, discuss it, or we can uh, watch or watch season two and record some of it. And uh, I'll help. We can edit something down. I want to do something because I love well, it. I know that they um, they're filming, still filming three. Uh, Clarkson <laughs> expects them to wrap up in October. Yep. So we'll get that next year. Next and year. And apparently it's like bigger and better. It's funny. I was looking at the article. They were like with returning stars such as Caleb uh, Cooper or whatever. And I was just like, I like the idea that he's this fob boy. Who's just like relatively who famous. never left his fucking town? Yeah, yeah. Well, he said he'd never seen a uh, James Bond movie. Yeah, he didn't know who so, Greta Thunberg was. Bless his heart. <laughs> there, oh, there's so much shit that he's disconnected. Boy. You, you can't help but feel like envious. He's just completely in his own little farming world, which is nice. This is okay. I wish they would just do comic book versions. That's all. That's all I got to say. Um, but yeah, it was it was really good, and holy fuck, is it doing a job of letting everyone know how screwed over farmers are? Uh, yeah, it is. And I I have a feeling another <laughs> network will pick it up. I just hope it's not fucking Disney. God, that would suck. Could you imagine? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, for for one, it's unscripted, so they're super cheap to make, and a ton of people watch it. So I I am pretty confident that another streamer would come along and pick it up. Well, yeah, and you know what I say what's cool about it is I think you could have the expectation that Jeremy's doing it because it's something to do. Yes. And uh, he's just going to try and squeeze it for all it's worth sort of thing. But I get the impression from watching it that he genuinely gives a well, shit and he wants to make it work. Yeah, I think Grand Tour is winding down because they're just getting old, dude. That, yeah. Uh, I think that driving around and racing around, there it feels like it's winding down, especially with that last special when only what's Richard point, was right? racing around and the other two were like, oh, we totally missed it and I can't fit in a car. You know? Yeah, the, the, the skits are getting a little bit, uh, you can see the seams. But the funny thing is, I don't mind just having a fucking hour of them just sitting down talking about random bullshit anyway. I don't either. I, yeah, the, the car stuff is incidental. What's this thing? So, is X-Ray Girl here? I see her in the background. Oh, yeah. Red door sinks Indiana Jones. Hi. I'm still in my work clothes. Wait, you're dressed as a nurse? Or technician? Yeah. Is it fappable? No. Not interested. <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, your mic is hotter than the average temperature of the world on July the 4th. Yes. Oh, is that better? That's all better. Thank you. White people? Hello. You white people and a tentacle monster? Oh no, joyride stalls. I don't know what that is. Uh, um, it's uh, apparently eight... it's meant to be quite funny, but it's, I don't know. Uh, it's well, X-ray girls in the movie. You tell us about it, mm. X-ray girl. <laughs> I can't tell which character you are, but you're in the movie. I'm all of them. No, I'm Ashley Park. I I know her. <laughs> she got a singing voice, but um, what what is this movie about? I don't know. Uh, idea. Ride? Scroll up a little bit though, because I want to read the headline. It's the Asian experience. So who, who am I riding? No, I'm kidding. It, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I actually have no idea what this is. Mark, that's the answer to that question. <laughs> you're playing at home. Um, all right, so uh, Indiana Jones uh, is is a massive failure. It is a catastrophic oh. failure. It is the biggest failure in the history of Lucasfilm. Might be oh. one of the 
I, it's easy in the top five flops for Disney all time. Uh, oh. We're going to get like profitability. That's that's where the failure comes from. But it's also oh, a failure so in storytelling. So it is sad. It's a failure in marketing. Oh. It's a failure of uh, Harrison Ford. And it's a failure we needed. I said this way back we when. We needed saying all of this without playing the cheering sound. But, you know, you do you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's failing. <laughs> Woo! I'm rooting for it. And and the reason I was rooting for it is way back in the last Jedi days when uh, the fandom was uh, perceived to be split, when a lot of people were just liking the movie because they didn't like the people who didn't like the movie instead of actually liking the movie and giving like legitimate reasons why they liked the movie and, ended, and ultimately ended up losing that battle. But uh, some of us were going, you know, we need a massive failure if you want this thing to genuinely turn around if you want to save a franchise it needs to fail it needs to hit bottom uh timing is everything though uh we we needed that failure to be the last jedi or solo or rise of skywalker it turns out it was a completely different franchise for lucasfilm and disney it was indiana jones that was the bridge too far that uh Mahler and i discussed so this failure needed to be very public. They couldn't hide it behind streaming numbers or call us uh, Russian bots or say it was review bombed we'll say or, it was COVID. or say it was COVID or say it was the alt-right conspiracy from Steve Bannon. They can't say any of that shit. They can't hide it. They have to own this. And we'll see how Disney owns this. They'll probably try to spin it, but they have to own it. Lucasfilm has hit rock bottom. Like, this is it. Kathleen Kennedy should be fired. Should have been fired a million times by now. Uh, and she won't be. This is how fucking stupid they are. And now they're, like, saying, well, you can't turn these ships on a dime. No, you can't. And that's why they can't survive. They, no, they you can't. That's why you need to fucking fire people like Kathleen Kennedy. So you can install the people who know what they're fucking doing that can then start to right the ships. Oh. But this is where this is where the problem comes in as... They can't. They can't write the ship. It, it's damn near impossible for Disney to write the ship. They they are on, they are headed right towards that fucking iceberg. They just hit it. They're scraping up against it. And now they're gonna sink for the next couple of years as another studio comes in, probably starts the cycle over. But it starts but with Star Wars, then Star Wars needs to go away for it, a decade. Well, they're they're not smart enough to do that. So they'll continue doing it. And this is why. This failure is good because it opens the door for independent creators because this is chipping away at centralized entertainment, at centralized Hollywood. So there's still a hunger for good entertainment, good storytelling, good comic books, good books, novels. All, there's still, there'll always be a hunger for that stuff. Well, you guys, now it's a better time than ever for you guys to provide it if you want. You know, and, and no, you're not going to compete against a $300 million film, but now we're seeing that. Some very low-budget films have just competed and beat a multi-hundred million dollar film. So Insidious, which I'm never going to fucking watch, I don't care, but it's a low-budget movie. And then, of course, Sound of Freedom, which, uh, you know, either barely beat it or even competing with it on July 4th and getting close to beating Indiana Jones is phenomenal. And per theater, it was destroying Indiana Jones. And we've already heard shenanigans behind the scenes. Don't even know if those are true or not. But let's just say Sound of Freedom did pretty well. Uh, and a lot of people are watching it. A lot of people are liking it. Uh, they like the message. Uh, and that's good. That's good. But two independent films destroying or even chipping away at a movie that cost $300 million with Harrison Ford's name on it, 80 years old or not, Lucasfilm's name on it. And Indiana Jones' names on it is the failure we needed for things to turn around. Um, you know, uh, this this uh, little culture war that we're definitely in, this battle, I think there was a lot of people who were just, I'm talking to content creators here, not you beautiful people in the chat. I think there was just a lot of them who thought the fight would be over in a year. That's, no. that's incredibly naive. <laughs> Sorry. It's embedded. It's, 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 yeah. a, it's a fucking blackhead. You gotta get, you gotta get the roots out, not just fucking pick at the fucking skin. And they think it's over. And uh, you know, uh, I talked about this with Eric on on Normal World and and Quarter Black. It's it's 
no, it, it just kind of has to be shattered. And I think that's what happens to entertainment. I don't think it'll be centralized. And there's basically three or four studios, uh, eh, we'll say five, that run everything in Hollywood right now. Five. Uh, but of those five, the top three run the show. Uh, and that's Disney. They still have the market share for movie theaters. And as far as streaming is concerned, Netflix is the big dog. But Amazon's got the most money in Apple who has more money than I think has more liquid than anybody uh, is trying to make inroads, but they can't, they just can't. Uh, they, you know, they get all the biggest stars, they get, uh, they get all these big properties, but they just seem to, they, you know, it's only for Apple people, which is fine. I'm not an Apple person, not anymore. Uh, Insidious, the red door sinks Indiana Jones with 32.7 million box office opening joyride stalls. Oh no. Um, uh, elsewhere, the conservative-leaning film Sound of Freedom comes in at number three with a hefty 18.2 million plus. Uh, by the way, <laughs> hey, as I just want to let everybody know that there's two far-right positions now that you need to know about. You, uh, you need to know this. If you go to the gym or you have a gym at home and you want to exercise, you are far right. And if you want to leave children alone, you are far right. So I guess I'm fucking far right now. I don't give a shit. Well, I would go so far as to say, not if you want to leave kids alone, but if you want to actively protect children from slavery, you're far right. You're far right. I, uh, sign me up. Oh, okay. I, I would, I, I, if, if that's far right, then I'm far fucking right all day, every day. But anything, as we all know, on the far left, anything that's right of the far left is Yahtzee. So, so it, 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 they're fucking meaningless. Fucking Marxist, commie, fucking wine. So should we just call every film that comes out? Uh, and these are the people who complain that we say woke fucking Hollywood. Dude, I don't say it enough. <laughs> I don't yes. say it. Far left progressive woke hollywood indiana jones fails okay yes. i can do that all fucking day long playing by your fucking rules and people go oh, absolute, absolute, people say absolute woke too much it's it's an overused term really because i just heard that exercise is far right mm -hmm. it's true it's true it's true big summer tent poles continue to struggle the struggle's real Hollywood struggle. <laughs> My struggle by Hollywood. Uh, so the, 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 the far left Hollywood films are struggling. Yep. But the far right Hollywood films are gaining traction. Uh, at the domestic box office where Horror Pick took down Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery. Uh, Insidious, the Red Door, opened to an estimated 32.7 million to win the July 7th through 9th weekend, beating out Indiana Jones 5, which fell to number two in its sophomore outing with an estimated 26.5 million. Has it finally hit 100 million? Because it hadn't done it through the uh, July 4th. Um, it's on 122 domestic, domestic after the weekend. After two weeks. So we're talking two weeks. That's, that is that is lower what they expected for the first weekend for this movie before hitting... The before hitting it's not Independence the Day, that's the film's problem. It's the international. Well, because no, the international no. is pretty as, much the same. As the domestic is also the problem because well, again, yeah, okay, again, no. <laughs> yeah. they expected but, minimum 140 million before they even hit July 4th on this movie. With a film like this, they're expecting the international yeah. to probably do twice as much as the domestic, yes, and, yes. and and the actual international is pretty much just going parallel to the domestic. How is it compared to the Flash? Mm, good question. Um, the Flash was a much bigger drop. Uh, the Flash was a 67% drop. This was a 55% drop. Did it start stronger or? It's, it did, I mean, it's doing better than the Flash because the Flash did 55 million, then dropped, se oh, sorry, 55 million, then dropped 70 something percent. This did 60 million, then dropped 55%. Right. So it's doing, it's doing better and it's tracking better than the fresh but i would i'd be shocked if this gets to 450 i really would i'd be shocked if this gets 450 worldwide not not domestic worldwide worldwide i would be shocked too 
because I don't think it's going to hit oh, 400 dude, if I'm completely wrong. It's about wrong. to get murdered starting today. I know it opened, uh, Mission yeah. Impossible opened yesterday uh, in a lot of places, but it opens today. In a weird... and I think it's going to lose theaters. They're going to start pulling it from theaters. Oh, it's going to start just crushing it. So, mm. uh, yeah, and, and it's also in, yeah, 4,600 theaters. Um, Sound of uh, Freedom, Freedom. Mm -hmm. was in a lot. It was in 2,600 theaters. That's a lot of theaters. Um, and now it's been bumped up to 2,900. That it, and as it should, because more people are watching it. And I think that thing's going to have some a little bit of legs. Uh, it's already made its money back. And good for Insidious, too. A movie I'm not going to watch, but, like, uh, uh, you know, what was that? that had Insidious a... is, what is well, well into they're, they're reliably, uh, the mm. Insidious has been going for ages. Same for Annabelle and uh, The Nun and all those. Conjuring. Bill Blumhouse. Yes. Yeah, Blumhouse. Yeah. Dude. I, I'm not going to speak to their quality, but I know that people love yeah. them. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't either, it's but. It's got, a, it's got an audience. But it's profitability. Mm that that place is about and it it fucking yes, makes yes. money it makes money and that's how kevin smith had such a uh, a career much longer than he should have be, uh, because back in the day he used to make movies for a couple million bucks and make mm. you know 20 million bucks they made money they 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 were profitable uh then he turned into a big fucking hollywood stoner sellout mm -hmm. or maybe that's what he always was now he always was yeah he, the, he was just his stories if you if you look at the context of his career, his stories shitting on Hollywood are simply based in his jealousy of jealousy, being accepted yeah. there. And that's what Howard Stern was too. Howard Stern shitting on celebrities and and Hollywood was just seething jealousy, right? Uh, which even the, the accusations towards us have died down. It's like I I don't want to ever be there. I have no desire to make movies or do any of that shit. I like what I'm doing now. But people have said that far. You're just jealous because you can't make one. It's like, no, I can't make one, but I'm not jealous. <laughs> I, don't I always found that weird when people yeah. were like, so how long are you doing this before you get into making movies? Because you're a movie reviewer, therefore that's your next step. It's Never. Like, oh, I, I'm like a movie, re a movie reviewer is a career. Yep. <laughs> like, that is a thing. And like, um, there's a couple of YouTubers who have moved on or tried to move on to it. And when they failed, it was like. Ugh, now what do I do with my life? It's like, exactly. Uh, you know what you were? You were a good YouTuber. That You know. Yeah, it, it's, uh, a lot of people see YouTube as a stepping stone to a better and more respected career, but fact is. I like your boy, Z your boy Zach well. from uh, Diversity in Comics. I like your boy Zach. He was a better YouTuber. He, he used to be a better YouTuber. He was an exceptional YouTuber. Not, you know, but he, he, wanted to, he didn't want to do it. He wanted to do something different. Good for him. But uh, he was a better. Yeah, I don't blame anybody who wants to pursue a different mm -hmm. career, but uh, it yeah. gets weird when they look down on YouTube as like a. Yeah. I'm kind of like. I, I, look down on me. I, I go for <laughs> go it. Go ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> uh, the Red Door. That just sounds like a porn. Uh, overperformed despite <laughs> weak reviews. Uh, scoring the second best domestic opening of the series behind 2013's Insidious, and it probably has something to do with its competition sucking. And people just wanted to go see a movie. I mean, there's again, mm. there, there's still uh, people still like movies. They still like good stories. And if this thing is well established, and wow, it over overperformed. I wonder why. Uh, every one of these has like the same structure, right? Like there's an opening scare, and then characters get enough information that they can search in the local library or find some guy who's like, I know about this creature. It's existed since the 1600s. And then some kind of horrifying thing where they get a religious person to cast it out. And then all that's left at the end is a hand, and it's like the hand moves, and it's like, oh my god, you, you know, I'm actually dead. Yeah, uh, and I, I got to think back to the Hollywood Reporter calling calling um, Sound of Freedom uh, right wing. It it it, it shows their fucking retardate. Like these are really dumb, dumb fucking people. Because even at this point, Hollywood Reporter doesn't realize that they don't think they're talking to anybody on the right. They don't think that. They don't think anybody from the right is reading this or anybody from the center. They think they're all talking to their own little echo chamber and they don't realize that no people, a, a lot of people like entertainment. So it's, 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 it's a bigotry. It's political bigotry. It's a blindness. It's, it's, uh, oh, well, every, everybody on the right's far right. And they would never read the Hollywood reporter. And, and that's, that's the ignorance uh, that's in that fucking cesspool of fucking Los Angeles uh, right now that that continues and that's 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 
the most insidious thing. Sorry, wanted to use it. <laughs> it's, there you go. I wonder if Insidious is a alt right or leftist movie. I think it's a uh, yeah. Th- I I didn't hear their opinion on that. <laughs> Maybe is the it a ghosts far right are like, horror. and the ghosts go ooh. They say racial slurs. It's like ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I voted for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> it's an orange. Get out ghost. of here! They're dangerous. <laughs> uh, grossing uh, and it made some money. You want to scroll down a little bit? Scroll. Scroll. You want to scroll down? Scroll. Uh, I'm waiting for the series to end to make a video on it. Uh, I was going to do two, but I just like, no, I'm just going to do one. Uh, I I could only do so many videos about male characters being fucking prison raped. Um, (laughs) Heading into the weekend. Uh pre-release tracking and suggesting that the fifth final insidious is this really the final one come on this is a horror right, franchise no, this is the second best in the series stop maybe <laughs> saying final one in the horror franchises they can go on for minimum 14 or 15 movies okay why even, uh, why, even why even say that even if they can't get the the original cast i think the same guy's been in it for all of them um the guy from watchman but uh just 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 make you know do it like any other sequel patrick, just make another with different people in it patrick wilson's a good actor he was great he watchman by yeah. the way yeah. uh in his feature directorial debut don't want to don't care okay dial of destiny from lucasfilm and disney tumbled more than 55 percent as it limped past the 100 million mark domestically to finish sunday with a cum a cum not a cum Q- a cum on a QAnon. QAnon. With a QAnon. a QAnon. Well, no, Temple of Doom is a QAnon adjacent film now, uh, according to Hollywood. <laughs> With a cum of 121.2 million, million, Indy 5 <laughs> earned a subdued 31.8 million <laughs> Lauren Tally of 126 points. I think, I think we broke ass. <laughs> For 7 million. And 200 and fucking whatever. Uh, the sleeper hit Sound of Freedom, uh, the QAnon Nazi movie. If you go, <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't say that. <laughs> Come on, Nazis. Let's see if this is like. Come on, Nazi. Let's go party. <laughs> Come on, Nazis, let's go party. <laughs> <laughs> From Angel Studios, placed third in North America with an estimated 18.2 million. The conservative leaning film, which was crowdfunded, is doing big business in America. Heartland, by the way, that's that's another that's that's future. That is your future. Instead of running around. Uh, to the same few producers or rich people who just want to have their name on a movie, which will still happen to you, can now crowdfund movies, and that will become a very viable thing. Viable thing. Uh, we, well, our best Batman stuff has been crowdfunded. Oh, oh, quite frankly, yes. And that's a great way to avoid gatekeepers. Now, uh, I'll get to my point. Uh, is doing big business in America's heartland. In America's heartland. It's in those flyover redneck states. Nobody in Los Angeles is watching Sound of Freedom. Los Angeles? Is that where those it's steers? New York are? City. <laughs> They're not in New York City watching Sound of Freedom. It's only those flyover states. I went to the with my gun. All those cousin humpers live in their basement. Ew. As you a hillbilly or are you just from the asylum? Pick one. Hold I'm up. sorry. I stole a doughy Canadian boy's line with Aww. bad with bad movie opinions. <gasps> but he's hunting. He's hunting, Rob. Hunting. Uh, is doing big business in America's heartland and in the South. In the South. They have, okay. The South will rise again through the sound of freedom. <laughs> Can they? The can, sorry, Hollywood Reporter. Can you please provide data on the on the demographic breakdown of how much money this has made 
Per state. Per state. Uh, I'm guessing people watched it in Oregon and in Washington. I'm guessing we're going to find theaters there. But apparently it's only in the heartland and in the south where this movie is doing well. Uh, and, and nobody ever points out that certain movies like Joyride or Bros, which flop, but like independent movies that do well, they're only released in urban environments. They're only released in San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York. Um, that's why it's terrible to judge uh, how a movie is doing in L.A. because that's the home team. They fucking sell out at almost everything. The Burbank Theater sells out almost for fucking everything because everybody's in the fucking industry. But if you want to know how a film's doing, come out to San Antonio and see if the theater's crowded or not. San Antonio. San Antonio. Uh, tell you what. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Sorry. Super Mario Brothers, Across the Spider-Verse, sold out fucking movie theaters. I was in. Hey, Gary. Gary, Gary. What, no. what, what? Can we, be f can we please be fair? This no. This is no. unfair. No. no. The, you, why are why you, should I be why fair? Why are you attacking the poor $330 million plus budget movie from the massive billion dollar corporation instead of protecting it against the small independent 14 and a half million uh, creative You don't understand as... I might hurt somebody's feelings who made $20 million. You're right. I, I'm i not well, being empathetic enough. M more more hurt their ego than feelings, but sure. They don't have any feelings. No. Uh, They're the ones who are trafficking the fucking kids for fucks. But uh, the elitist, up their own fucking ass media is saying that this movie, I didn't even read this part of the article, so yeah, I'm like, holy shit. Look, listen to these fucking retards. Oh, and you wonder why you're dying. I just keep wondering. You know, I'll try to tell you. I'll make lots of videos tell you why you're dying. None of you are going to watch them, and that's fine. I don't give a shit. I think it's fucking funny at this point. So apparently, uh, you're part of the clan, and uh, you're a Nazi if you fucking go watch Sound of Freedom, a movie about freeing uh, kids from a life of servitude, uh, sex, slavery, and, well, a life that leads to death at a very early age. Um, Operation Underground, by the way, is a charity that I have uh, used quite a bit. Uh, and this is kind of like, it's about the dude who, I guess, runs that. Gina Carano uh, has used that charity as well. It's a good charity. It's a good charity. Uh, it's uh, received an A-plus cinema score from... I guess only audiences in the South and the heartland. Uh, people in LA are, are giving it an F, man. Uh, finished uh, Sunday with a domestic tally of 40, 40 million dollars. This movie has made, and you know what did California give it? Did it give it a uh, F? Would not turn gay. It, it took the X out of Latinx and women and gave it an X. <laughs> We took the X out of Latinx to give this a... Uh, uh. An X! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Pix Pixar. I am so happy it's failing. I am. I uh, wish it could be Christmas. I wish it could fail day. harder. I, honestly, I want it to fail some more. And I'm going to well, report the, on the, the failure. The is doing that on its own. I, it, it is, but I want Indy to just really embarrass Disney. And it and it has. It, it's embarrassed Disney so much that we, we aren't even talking about another Pixar flop. Another Pixar Aren't they flop. just yeah, automatic no flops now? Yeah, nobody talks about any of them, really. Yeah. And nobody sees these movies. I haven't talked to anyone who's seen Elemental. Elemental's still got to make it at like 100, 150 million to even break even. It's just Elemental, for one, looks like it was developed in a marketing room. Hey, let's do anthropomorphic elements now, you know? And that way we could do they, them, non binary, and it'll be fire and water. It's like fucking, it just sounds like a marketing group came up with that shit. Nobody will guess that elements are actually allegories for race. I just thank God my kids are old now and I don't have to fucking watch this shit all the time. Because I had to watch them all for about a 10 year period 
anything that was animated, I was there. And most hey, of man, it was some shit. Some of them were good. Which I, where, 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 where did you start with? What did I start with? Like probably two, Toy Story two. <laughs> Go way back. Yeah, Toy Story two is good. Toy Story two. The, uh, Pixar was good back. Dude, The Incredibles was the best one of all. Uh, yeah, but then I saw great. like little gems, like the box trolls. I like the box trolls. Thought that was pretty fun. But then I sat through like a hundred pieces of shit that I couldn't care less about. That I fell asleep thankfully through most of them. Uh, but yeah, Elemental's failing. Great. Uh, across the Spider Verse, what movie that only cost a hundred million dollars that didn't have an ending? Uh, did doing pretty well. Guardians of the Galaxy could have probably done better if they hadn't. It's on. It's available on digital already. And you'll be able to get it in Blu-ray, but it did not surpass Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. By the way, it's going to be Disney's most successful movie this year, without a fucking doubt. Unless, of course, uh, the Oscar push for Jonathan Majors' Magazine Dreams does well, or the Marvels. There's the Marvels. I guess that can make a billion dollars. Definitely, I would mm -hmm. actually say that's a safe bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for everyone else. Uh, I cannot. I, every every time I see something like this failing now, particularly because I legit thought the Flash was going to do probably six hundred, six fifty, and I thought I Indiana too. Jones would get at least six hundred, seven hundred. I did too, even though it was falling. Uh, I cannot wait for the Marvels. I do. I cannot wait. I'm telling you, Christmas lands November tenth. Yes, yes. I can't fucking wait. <gasps> I can't wait to go to the cinema, be sat on my own because no fucker else is gonna be there, and and watch this disaster. And then and then their the next movie they have if there's Deadpool three again, it's look at that as a carryover from Guardians of the Galaxy. There won't be a Deadpool four. We'll no. just say that. But then their next like Disney Marvel movie is Captain Black America Falcon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Captain Black America Falcon <laughs> with a bunch of Hulk characters. They go, what the hell? They're bringing back Betty and, and the leader, and they're putting him in a fucking Black Falcon Captain America movie <laughs> with, yeah, with that Harrison one's, Ford. That one's all over the place. It I don't know what the fuck's going on with that movie. Stupid as fuck. You're New doing, World, Brave New World Order. Well, they're doing, they want to do Thunderbolts and maybe Dark Rain, some of the, but you can't do any of that without the buildup, and you can't do the buildup without, oh, Captain America and Iron Man and Thor and Hulk and all those. Like real Marvel characters, not the B team or not the past the mantle team, uh, not the derivative team. They're finding that out. Uh, news flash Disney Star Wars is Han, Luke, and Leia. That's what, and Darth Vader. That's what Star Wars is. It's what it was, it's what it is today, it's what it will be tomorrow. Are there a bunch of people who are into the peripheral characters? Yes, but you want to sell to the normies. And to the normies, Star Wars is Han, Luke, and Leia. Guess what? You killed them all. Yeah. Uh, Marvel, you did the impossible. Well, Disney, you didn't do it. Paramount did it. You took some B characters and you made them A-list. Uh, and you'll never do it again. So we have Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. Believe it or not, in the comic books, not A-list characters. They just weren't. They are, and they became that. And uh, the ones you didn't kill off, you completely vandalized. But your MCU was Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, the Avengers, you know, and they're gone. So your franchise is gone. It's just a bunch of B team, it's a bunch of scrubs. I don't need no scrub. Shouting out from the passenger ride of his best friend's ride or whatever the fuck it is. Don't need no scrub. <laughs> <laughs> Shouting out from the passenger side of his best friend's ride. I'm trying to remember a song from like 30 years ago. Sure. Oh R.I.P. Left Eye. R.I.P. Oh, yeah. Good song, though. It is a good song. They played it all the fucking time. Uh, look at that. Co a comic book. I'm gonna, I know. I should get some of those. It's a bag and board. This is the, uh, uh, the new Transformers. Okay. So, uh, to sum it up, very, I don't think Happy mm -hmm. even describes it. Filled with joy. 
that Indiana Jones 5 is failing utterly. Ecstatic is a word Ex- I would I am on cloud nine, okay? And I'm not sorry. And I don't give a I shit. I am happier than a pig in shit. Yep. Yep. Uh, because especially with with content creators and this has helped build an independent movement. Talking about this stuff has helped build it. And other people have ran with it like Eric July. Absolutely ran with it. And done great things. By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna be on with him tomorrow night on his channel. But he's a failure. He he's only taken one point eight million dollars <laughs> so far. In like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good God. He's a failure, says stinky woman who stinks of cat piss that lives on welfare uh, and lives in a YMCA and is nearly bald and is over 50. Calls Eric July failure. Well, obviously, um, <laughs> obviously she's an ex- expert in publishing and uh, and selling comic books. So. Mm. <clears throat> Uh, Pride Inc. Chronicles for 20 British pounds says, hello, all very excited to be seeing Mission Impossible 7 next weekend. Uh, Mission Impossible films similar to Roger Moore era Bond, thrilling chases, glam ladies and serious threat and human all missing from Craig era Bond. Hail Tom Cruise. Yeah, I, a mi- Mission Impossible has taken over for Bond. I mean, it just has. Oh, and big, that's, uh, yeah, big and time. I, big and time. I hate to say that as a Bond lifelong Bond fan. Lifelong, but Mission Impossible, way more fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, I, I, not quite as goofy as Roger Moore. Era. And by the way, I grew up on Roger Moore. I fucking love Roger Moore. That That's my bond. That's the bond I grew up with as a kid. Love Roger Moore. Uh, I, I think what Fallout did was got a little more, there was, like, levity in that. Uh, the cool thing about, like, Ethan. Got some darkness e- in that film. Ethan Hunt, like, stumbles his way through that movie. You notice that, right? It's like a lot of, it's just his grit. You know, it's not like I'm just this perfect spy. He's like, he's always looking confused. Like when he gets in the helicopter, he's like, uh, uh, Ethan, we could do this. Hunt has consistently made emotional decisions. More um, emotional and moral decisions. Yes. Mm. True. Instead of, instead of what, what has been now again, Asked of him, I guess. Should the IMF be shut down because most of the problems stem from the intelligence agencies, fucking agents going rogue? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much yeah. every. <laughs> but it's usually their fault. A lot it's... of double agents. A lot of. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Mission Impossible Two. Do Gray Scott is a former IMF agent? Yes. Or even maybe still a current IMF agent. I wasn't quite able to determine which. They, they always want to have twists and turns and stuff. It can't literally be like a bunch of guys just have a bomb and they're going to set it off. You got to stop them. Well, in one, they, uh, I mean, like, uh, there was an arms dealer. There was a bad arms dealer in one. Well, in three, we didn't even know what the rabbit's foot did. No. There was a couple. Uh, well, I mean, it's Jar Jar Abrams. Of course not. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. But there was one theory that if they stuck with, I think it was just a fan theory, would have been good. That it, when they called it anti god, it was uh, it was a form of anti matter, and if it was let loose, it would just break down reality. I'm like, that'd be fucking. Whoa, whoa. That's, that's that's a pretty good weapon. <laughs> I like that. Um, I think they've already released that. It's called the zo- isn't it the new zombie drug? Uh, that's just breaking down people. Well, I mean, CERN put hey. us. I think CERN's put us in multiple different real- realities to put us in this one. Holy shit! They're like, we Dude, need to find the right look one. At, look at shit. Look we at need to shit. find the right one where Doctor Who, Star Trek, and Star Wars are all fucked. They like they they released Dial of Destiny. They're like. They still think this is a legitimate movie that got made by people. Uh-huh. We're still tricking them into thinking this is a real movie. <laughs> I'm starting to believe that simulation stuff a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, rad. What is this? Radicalized. <laughs> rad. Radicalized. Radicalized. <laughs> uh, uh, for $25 in four parts says, uh, I've been watching you all for about a year now. Uh, well, welcome. Thank you. I've always wondered why Az calls some things dog shit. I mean, he could just call it shit if he if he if it stinks. What's the difference? 
shit is shit, but dog shit. Is dog, dog shit. Dog shit. <laughs> yep. I think that's a really good explanation. I think it's really detailed, and I think that that, <laughs> that probably keeps him from being uh, confused. Yeah. yeah. Master of English. Well, well done. Here. Well done. Uh, see, the Brits always explain things better than Americans. I, I will ex say that. I mean, they're better at bullshitting. Oh, by the way, I love Phil Jimenez art. Love Phil Jimenez art. Uh, but after watching He's Afternoon Two with As. Crazy. <laughs> But I like his own. Uh, but after watching Afternoon Tea with Az uh, recently, I went out mm. to do some yard work with my two St. Bernards. And, of course, I literally stepped in it, dog being dog shit. shit. I was angry. It stunk. I was actually cursing the creator, and it truly ruined my previous good mood for quite a while. I finally <laughs> realized the difference between the, uh, the two types. There you go. That's even I even do. Better. I do like the idea that you know Jesus is looking down. He's like, I didn't. You stood at it, man. I, I didn't. Do it. <laughs> you wanted to oh know the God. difference. Here's your answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Gary. 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 Some Phil Jimenez art. Yeah. Guess who wrote this? Uh. It's uh. It's uh, Showcase ninety four. Oh, Huntress Dixon. It... <laughs> you bet. There you go. All fucking day, every day, baby. Rad dickhole lies. Last part. Uh, so all I'm really trying to say is Indiana Jones and the pile of dysentery is just that. Dog shit. There you go. <laughs> I'm trying to remember when my movie was. Hey, dude. It's not them. Now. Do you remember them? They them? No, do you remember them? Tits? Yes, I remember tits. <laughs> I remember boobs. <laughs> Huntress yeah, I, boobs. I, I, I love me some Phil Jimenez art. I do. Hot coffee for $20. I think that Lucas picked KK explicitly to get back at people for hating on his prequels. He knew that KK had no creative talent. When he picked her, he knew her personality, and I am certain he knew what would happen? I think it was just somebody he knew that came in with Spielberg. I don't know how close their friendship is. I don't know. Um, I think Lucas wanted to be wanted to pick the president before Disney took over. Bob Iger made it sound like it was done behind his back. I don't believe a fucking word that weatherman piece of shit said, so I don't know. In his curated fucking biography, other than he fucked over George Lucas. I think George Lucas fucked over himself. I think he he made an emotional decision. When Dude. he sold Star Wars, it was an emotion. He offered four billion dollars. Is he gonna do anything with it himself anymore? Oh, he's made more money. I, I, you know, I don't know if he's regretted the decision. It, it certainly sounds like he has, but he's made more money. He's made a lot more money off, and and not had to take any of the heat. But I still think mm -hmm. it was an emotional decision, and he was already rich enough. He didn't need to sell Star Wars. He was already a billionaire. He was already a billionaire. So he didn't need to sell Star Wars. I think it was an emotional decision based on uh, the prequel. Listen, the prequels weren't good. All right? I, I, I know the Disney trilogy makes them look not as bad. Okay. But for the most part, they weren't good. They weren't good. I'm, I'm not going to change my mind on that. I'll just say I'd rather watch Phantom Menace than anything fucking Disney Star Wars has do done. But I'm not going to go. I don't even own Phantom Menace, dude. I don't. I own the original trilogy. I, Revenge of the Sith is all right. It's all right. I like all of them. I don't think any of them are good. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I enjoy them a hell of a lot more. You can en that. enjoy them all day long. That's that's fine. There there are moments like the the, the lightsaber duels and stuff are really fucking cool. Is know? that it's just that Disney Star Wars has just got that element of misery. They're so good at creating miserable content. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I know a lot of people feel that way when they watch prequels or whatever, but I find them fun. I, uh, while when I watch all of my favorite heroes get old and not care about each other and stuff, and you know, I find that a little bit more miserable. And the prequel fans can can clap right back at me and say, "You like mm -hmm. the Hobbit?" Yes. I'm not going to say it's good though. <laughs> I'm not going to say the Hobbit trilogy is good, but I like it. I think the it's the third one is the one I dislike the most out of the Hobbit trilogy. I remember the first one being like super fine. Uh, the the it just needs to be cut down. Yeah, uh, there's the whole thing. There's parts of the third one, like towards the end, I like. 
Uh, right. And there's some good acting in that stuff. But yeah, the third one is just like stretched out, and it's a third act tacked on as a whole movie that that just didn't need to happen. Uh, but the first one's the best one, and parts of the second one would have probably made a really good movie. Just movie. It's a short book, so it didn't need to be made into a trilogy. Uh, you know what I ended up uh, forcing as to finally see? Uh, mm. Oh, The Prestige. I did. I did it. And what did Daz think? Loved it. So it's, so it's brilliant. Great Absolutely movie. Brilliant. It is mm. a great movie. Really, really good. Really nice. I think Mort Mort was relatively impressed with my deductive reasoning for, for some of the film. Yeah, he picked up a whole bunch of stuff that I think is just the right amount of subtle, um, mm. a lot of it. Because uh, I like that they give you a lot to work with, but they still pile on a bunch of additional stuff, you know? And then you start uh -huh. looking back, and you're like, oh, fuck, how did I miss that? And you're like, I know, right? It's I mean, they were all great in it, but Hugh Jackman and, and, and Christian Bell in it were just superb. Dude, that movie has... I, Tesla I, as well, you I, know? Fucking, that's a cool factor, man. And then, and yeah. yeah, it's Nolan's best. Yeah, that's my favorite Nolan film. Yep. Uh, Ryan Benoit for $100. <laughs> Holy shit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, hail to the fellowship. Hey, Gary. I want to do some fan art for you. Can you accept prints at the P.O. Box on uh, your website? Yes. Also, uh, it's a UPS store. So, yeah, absolutely. Also, what's your favorite genre? Sword and sorcery, adventure, or sci-fi? Ooh. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The answer is yes. Yes. All of it. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll you can only choose one. Oh, well, <laughs> you know. No, <laughs> I don't have to. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> you can't tell <laughs> me what to do. Even if you're given one, it's just like, okay. I think, although there's not enough of them, when there's a good fantasy movie, oh, I'm yeah. into it. I think sci-fi, better on TV, better on TV. Because it's more the man, fantasy, the eighties, best decade ever for fantasy. Yep. Uh, adventure, anything, because adventure covers action movies and mm -hmm. uh, Indiana Jones and uh, Mission, Mission Impossible, Impossible and superhero movies. So uh, my answer is yes. Uh, yeah. JM nineteen ninety nine. Thank you, As Mahler Gary. There's a question mark there. Where does Akira sit on your anime list? I have not seen it. It's on my list to see. Um, I like it. It's a uh, it's a very complex film, very complex film. Um, it's not something I tend to go back to a lot. It's quite heavy, so I I, I watch it. I, I probably haven't seen it for fifteen years now. So it might be certainly worth another rewatch. There's something like Cowboy Bebop. I'll go back to every few years. Perfect Blue. I like to go back and watch every few years. Ghost in the Shell. I like to watch the movie. I like to go into standalone complex, which is essentially the film, but if it was okay. Blah, 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 blah. The answer is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us what you had for fucking dinner too while you watch Akira? <laughs> super yeah. chatter, I am sorry for answering the super chat that you spent your hard earned money to I just send want to, to give Gary him shit. Because he's not an anime guy. He's like yeah, Fuck nobody it. asked me my list because I mean, like, I don't even have a. Uh, I I've seen Akira, okay. Mm -hmm. But when I got out of prison and I was working working at the warehouse, I did. I fucking didn't uh, Japanimation, none of that shit. I I didn't really care enough to even know what the fuck it was. I know I watched it as a kid as Speed Racer and Star Blazers and stuff. But you know, it just to me it was a cartoon. So I'm looking at Akira and I'm like, hey. This looks like a really fucking cool cartoon. So I threw it in <laughs> and I got written up. I got written up for playing what? it on the video. Yeah, I was playing Akira in the store. <laughs> in the fucking in the retail store. And they're like, my friend, no. <laughs> so, I love Akira. Uh, on Hulu, saw it for the first time. Very impressive. Also, what franchise will be sacrificed next in Disney slash Lucasfilm? Kathleen Kennedy is akin to uh, an ocean, the Ocean Gate CEO. <laughs> Too soon? No. It's a few days now. Um, there there's are none. none. There's none. There are none. There are none. 
There are literally none. She's gotten through it all. She's getting Dave mm. Filoni shit. And Dave Filoni's going to fuck up his own fucking shit. Because uh, that'll that'll bring in new Star Wars fans. A season five to a cartoon that barely anybody fucking watched. What do you mean barely anybody watched? I mean like a million people fucking watched it in a country of 330 million people. And maybe that was just around the world. Don't know. Not that many people watched it. Uh, Ryan, again, for $20. How did Fury not know about aliens before the Asgardians showed up in Thor? As said in the Avengers. Because he's a, he's, I guess he's a liar or he's a forgetful old man. Maybe Fury's, a, a, Fury's got to be a scroll at this point. <sighs> Fucking all of them are, man. It's so sad. They just forget all this shit because they don't care. Well, but but I he don't know if they forget. I just think they don't care. But he dealt with the scrolls and Captain a uh, marvelously bad uh, <laughs> Captain marvelously bad back in the nineties. <laughs> That's good. Um, well, and by the way, they searched the galaxy. They couldn't find a planet, as they do say that at one point. Taylor says like they just couldn't find one that worked. No planet that the scrolls could, you know. Hi, we've on. seen a bunch of them in different Marvel films. I know we've seen yeah, a nah, shit ton of them. No. Nah, nah. And uh, why nah. isn't anybody talking to the Kree? I mean, the Kree's like this horrific empire that's out there, and it's like nobody's worried about them at all. They just they just wiped out a planet of fucking people to the point where you have this re refugee crisis. But the Kree are just out there. Man, there's an emperor, maybe. Don't know, empress. There's so many civilizations all over the galaxy that would take them in but the the film the show has to pretend like everyone hates them and then our villain is like Meh, everyone hates me so i'm gonna kill everyone we're gonna find out in the marvels <laughs> and we're gonna get girl ronin the well, me, the, by the, way, the me the too accuser they're gonna end secret invasion gary with like some really shit knot ties they'll just be like uh this is fine now this is fine now and this is fine now oh no on to the marvels Woo! and then after the marvels this is fine now. This is fine now. Young Avengers. Oh my Godsies. Oh, fuck. Go fuck yourself. Remember, remember all the people who said, What are you getting so oh. upset about? They're not, they're <laughs> just passing a couple of mantles. Marvel's been really good. They're not going in the same direction as the comics that ended in total disaster that pretty much undercut the entire American comic book industry. They're not doing the same thing, are they? They couldn't possibly be that dumb. And yet, here we are. Here we are. Told you so. Speaking. Told you so. By the is, way, did, is that going to be a TV show or a film? Which film? a film? Um, if, uh, yeah, intersectional feminist Avengers. The intersectional feminist Avengers. Is that going to be a telly show? Or well, I mean, be... the Marvels is kind of it. Uh, I don't know. The Young Avengers will probably be a television show, but I think it. Oh, oh, I just read an article. It's coming out in my video, but they said, well, you know, Marvel can't turn on a dime, but they. Ex but if they do turn things around, uh, we'll find out around 2026 or 2027. <laughs> like, what? No. no, we won't. No. There's a strike. They can't make anything. So add a year minimum to that. And no. Add three years to that. No, because Hollywood will start saying, wait a minute, action movies are profitable and they don't cost as much money. Let's start doing those. And independent creators can make Ashkin movies all fucking day long. All you know, day long. Indiana Jones was an action adventure movie once. I know. Oh. And not a CG oh. fest. Oh. We're an old man struggling to write a tuk tuk. Dude, I'm watching <laughs> Fallout and Tom Cruise is hanging off a fucking helicopter for real above uh, like a, a giant mountain range. And yeah. he's just a little bit older, younger than Harrison Ford was in Crystal Skull. And he's older than John Voight was in the first movie. In the first film, <laughs> yes. 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 Oh sure, my John Voight looked old when he was young. This is true. Yeah, he's always looked old. This is true. Voight. Well, having Angelina Jolie as a daughter might do that to you. Just saying. Do you remember how he plays her dad in Tomb Raider? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you know how they don't talk to each other anymore now? Yes. Yeah. Because he he's he's he likes Trump. <laughs> well, no, no, it was because he called out her fucking weirdness, her her her, her um her bizarre behavior with uh, Billy Bob and all this sort of stuff. And, and it was bizarre, but that was Hollywood. 
Oh, was Billy Bob the one where they kept vials of blood on each other's yeah. neck or whatever? Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, that is nothing compared. Like, I'm like, oh, that's no, kind yeah, of that's, that's kind of adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but now all the all their kids are uh, are uh, trans kids. Isn't it weird that the high percentage of trans and non-binary kids with actors and artists, like their accessories to look cool, isn't it strange? Yeah, people treat kids. You know, that one of actually one of Madonna's kids kids no longer identifies in that direction. Uh, Will Smith, I think, almost had a kid or did have a kid do that. Uh, a couple of basketball players, uh, some comic artists. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of celebrity ish, celebrity adjacent kids. Isn't Gwyneth Paltrow's kid called Apple? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Kids no, are not fucking crazy. accessories, you pieces of shit. Well, they are these, these people. <laughs> now, Zaku Boy for fifty dollars. <laughs> and when uh, they're abandoned by their parents and they're homeless on the street, talking to themselves, smoking crack, you and I can take care of them. Young yeah, welfare. Yep. Who sees into the hearts of men and the undergarments of women? Peeping Tom, a gaggle of m massage parlor murders has left the faces of the happy endings <laughs> twisted in horror. Is Tom hard enough to resist the <laughs> tricks of our of the cat house killer? <laughs> cut. What is it? Cutthroat? Oh, cutthroat. cutthroat. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> That's also scary. Oh. No, it, Okay, we cannot oh, not have happy our happy endings. Tom must thwart this. But remember, Tom is ambivalent. He doesn't care. He's like, I just want to see Bob's. And then he he stumbles into, you know, fighting crime. And, he's like and, Johnny English. Yeah, he's Johnny English. <laughs> he is. That is it. Uh, I'm a fucker. <laughs> I'm a fucker for $20. Says feels good to finally see these things fail. It's sad. It took so long to happen in retrospect, and it ain't over yet. More vids to come. Oh, it's so not over. And it also did take fucking ages. It took ages. And we, uh, we're just in the beginning, and it's a long fight, and not everybody is up for this fight. Not everybody was about this fight, especially, uh, you know, uh, Jeremy put out a great tweet. The other day talking about, hey, this is, you know, this is the beginning of the independent era and independent eras start out like this. And, you know, it was brought up that, you know, it's it we don't want uh, we don't want the wheel to just come back around again. Uh, uh, but that's kind of the cycle. But there's an easy way to not be part of that cycle. And that's don't sell out. Be independent, stay independent, keep your shit. You know, you can't put a price on not having any strings attached to your life or as few as possible, as few as possible. That's not even re real to not have any attached. But, uh, you know, we still have things we got to dance around here on YouTube and stuff. But uh, I I answer to the audience as answers to the audience. Mahler answers to no one because he's an eldritch god. Uh, an x-ray girl does math. But... Um, it's great. It's great. Stay independent, you know, but yeah, some people are going to sell out. Some people were never, if, if, uh, whatever this movement is, some people were just never about it. They were never about it. Never be about it. Uh, be prepared for that. Be prepared for some disappointments along the way. We've already had plenty. Believe me, believe me, believe uh, me. but stay focused. Keep your eye on the prize if you're a content creator. But no better time than now to start up this little hobby of YouTubing if you can't create a comic or do both. Start YouTube, create a comic, uh, build your own uh, fellowship. Mm -hmm. Why not? And and even if it doesn't happen and you don't become insanely rich, which I hope you do, uh, you had fun along the way. That's the whole point of it, right? Uh, but uh, Eric and I discussed this, and uh, maybe because I'm stupid, uh, I'm fine with being stupid. Uh, I'm fine where I am. Totally cool in the in this room. Don't want to be a part of any studio or network or anything. I just don't care. I don't care to be a part of that at all. 
It just sounds like obligations and wanting me to be places on time. And I did that. Isn't the whole point of what we do being our own bosses? Yeah. Really, you know. It really is. You know, I you mean, saw, that creative freedom to you do see what, what we want. Like Barstool Sports, totally fucking sold out. And it's hurting them. You know, and they were like the indie sports thing. So now that just creates another opportunity, Sports Wars, for there to be another indie sports channel out there. See it all the time. Uh, Corey, uh, Corey Blumberg for $10. Uh, Gary, September. I got to keep it on the time. I forgot what time my movie started. What time was my movie started? I don't know. <laughs> that you started 90 minutes earlier. So I think my movie starts at three. Uh, I got to get out of here by by two. We got time. We got time. Felt okay. for a minute that me and As were like, wait, were we supposed to know the answer to this question? No, 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 no. I, sh I should know. I mean, dude, like if I'm a little late, I'll miss the half an hour of fucking previews. I'm so I'm done. I can yeah. see any trailer I want on fucking line now. Uh, and, and the only one I've actually given shit about was the Dune trailer. That was the only one. Oh, I, I had an Expendables 4 trailer. Wait, what? There's an Expendables 4? There is. Yes. Uh, uh, what? Uh, 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 so Sly is barely in it, right? And it's a Jason Statham movie. Jason Statham movie. Which yeah. I'm fine with. I'm completely <sighs> fine with. Um, there is a comic book, uh, Expendables Go to Hell, I think. Yeah, okay, I got it right over there. I got it, yeah. Got the hardback. Uh, how's Drinker's comic doing? Oh shit! Were we supposed to mention Chuck Dick? Uh, uh, sorry, Graham's comic that he. Uh, that was I think like a week or two ago. Oh shit! I missed it. I don't know. No, we, 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 we no, it, it was it was meant to be on FNT, and we 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 did we announced it on FNT. Dude. Oh, we did. Okay. Yeah. Whew. We're good. We're good. Don't worry. <laughs> Corey Blumberg for ten dollars. Gary, September twenty third, Ashton, South Carolina, Hobbit Day celebration. I'm gonna need you to attend as Gandalf. And officiate my wedding there. I'm dead serious. Well, I I I did uh, join. I gotta find my certificate, but I did join the Church of Life or whatever the fuck it was, so I can actually, I can actually marry people. What? Yeah, you, dude, it was just something you signed up for online ten years ago, and uh, yeah, you can marry people. Uh, so September twenty third, maybe. If you're dead serious, email. Uh, you got to talk to my my manager, which is my wife. <laughs> She'll tell me if I'm available that week. That's right. That's after the UK well, meetup. You might actually be on vacation still, wouldn't you? I might be. But we'll see. We'll see. Thank you. I'd be happy to do it. I'd be happy to do it. I could boomer a wedding. That'd be awesome. Uh, Maximus T Timaeus? Maximus Timaeus for $5. As entered that Eric... Taxon video covering Wolf going by the acid trip glitch on his camera. I oh. what did I just say? Uh, <laughs> no idea. I think he's oh, talking about when it went all. Yeah, yeah. Like an autistic style, I guess. Some people might enjoy it. You just look terrifying to me, as it. it yeah, um, it frightened and confused me a little bit. <laughs> I look terrifying at the best of times, mate. No, oh my god. So, uh, X-Ray Girl, we're probably uh, probably do the gaming either, probably tonight. Okay. If you're up. What I'll time? let you know. Well, I got to see <laughs> Mission Impossible, but then after Mission Impossible, after a couple hours, I'll be home. So I'll ping you. Uh, okay. I was supposed to do it last night, but I had to finish a video because Comic-Con's coming up. And we're working on something for next week's Real BBC that will be on Az's channel. Don't know if it's going to happen yet. Cross your fingers. I can't say anything. Just audience, cross your fingers. Okay. Aaliyah Wells for $2. Uh, what does Mahler look like, LOL? Uh, a picture of him right there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And a picture of him. Lots of tentacles. Yeah. He's about... 70 foot tall about that. yeah if i'm if i'm kneeling down about oh 70 goodness. foot multiple tentacles I, I can't wait to meet you in person Wings. i'm gonna meet you in person both of you guys in a couple of months i'm super excited about it yay i am 
take Gary's a... like desperately waiting for us to reciprocate that, and we just no, there, you're not. I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'm gonna roll into your house like I fucking own the place. Own I'm gonna start. No, I believe you. <laughs> I believe you when you say that, Gary. Oh, dude, you would not see me and my wife together. We'll start cooking you dinner. You're gonna we'll come start... into my house. You're gonna go. Is this it? <laughs> like, be, yes. Nah. That's all I've got, Gary. It's a box. What? I lived in a fucking box most of my life, dude. Three years. <laughs> yeah, I didn't talk, you know who you're talking I can't to, right? How big the houses are in San? Was it San Francisco? Yeah, where I lived, oh, they're so tiny. Small. They're fucking tiny. They're they're British size. Uh, Taker six ten for five dollars. Mahler during Gary's Gollum stream, I suggested if you need to correct him, say no fuck brain, <laughs> but you had had. <laughs> But you had left before he read that chat. Oh, no. Oh, so, so harsh. Uh, I yeah. probably would respond a little bit. But but it's funnier. I thought it was a, a lot more funny to treat me like a small, small child, which was what they were doing. They are going, good boy. Don't go over there. <laughs> oh, you're getting closer. That's you're getting a good closer. boy. Oh, no. Not getting I mean, closer. maybe kind of. No, no, no. mentally. We would go. Uh oh, boo! Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Boo. So either mentally challenged puppy or very very small child. Not sure. <laughs> and I still say we didn't go hard enough. Well, that's what she said. A pack of lipsagon for ten dollars. Hey, Mahler and As, would you be willing to stream Metal Gear Solid Three Remake when it comes out? If so, get Gary in on it. Uh, He'd drop his jaw from how well it holds up in this day and age. I wouldn't know the difference. Gary yeah, wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't he know. wouldn't have a fucking clue. <laughs> and slightest clue. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm. I'm not fussed. I'm not fussed with it at all. It's. It's Konami just doing a a, a light for light remake to coin in on it. It's got nothing to do with Kojima. Um, I'm already pissed off enough with Konami. Just as a company, never mind. Because Silent Hill 2 remake Wait, looks like it's been butchered. What's, to hell. what's Konami and Kojima? Is that like ramen? Sure. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's a good guess, Gary. You got it right. First try. time. First time. Those yeah. brands of ramen. Noodles. I'm not, I'm not yeah. eating ramen anymore. I, I love ramen noodles, but that's just carbs. I can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> Down with carbs. I'm eating carbs. Boo. Are you back to carbs? Can you do that well, now? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm doing. My, I'm doing the. I'm back on the uh, the prep meals. Oh, there you go. Good, 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 good. Uh, but not simple carbohydrates, right? No sugars. No, 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 no. Complex, complex carb. carb. Complex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boo. Simple and complex. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I want simplex. Simplex. That sounds like a fucking sanitary brand. I was gonna say it sounds like a. Or spot removal cream dude uh my wife <laughs> me, my wife meal prepped me for while she was gone so again i was treated like a very small child <laughs> she made like wow bag. Oh. she did that's actually so cute it's, it's great yeah that's <laughs> awesome i just empty my little plastic bag of ground turkey and whatever fucking couscous or whatever the fuck it is uh rice shit and uh I but it's not couscous. rice i hate it it's, it's fine so dry well, if you have it with ground turkey and you put some spice in it, it's okay. I mean, it's just oh, sustenance. God. It's just sustenance. Just, That's all it is. Dirt. Yeah, it's kind of like dirt. <laughs> but I, I like it, man. You know, Mother Earth is good for you or something. Mother Cus Earth. Cussing, That's Mother Cus Earth. Cussing ground turkey. That sounds like something you get given to eat in a fucking Turkish prison. Um, <laughs> did you, did you, you use Turkish prison because of turkey? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe. It's a ground turkey man. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. too many people in the prison. So. As have you ever silent green? It's silent green. As have you ever been to a Turkish prison? <laughs> you ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> <laughs> Taylor S for nine ninety uh nine ninety nine nine nine. Mahler, can you tell us this week's EFAP is going to be what it's going to be about? There is a good chance we're waiting for Rags to see uh, Dead Reckoning. Uh, we might make it about that. Oh. Oh, shit. 
I can't. Well, uh, Drinker asked me to be on uh, Open Bar Thursday, but I can't. I want to. I don't like saying no to the drinker, but I'm driving up to Dallas to do Normal World. Or I would. Or uh. I would be there. I would be there with bells on. With little bells on, looking like a little girl. Because I'll so be as happy as a little girl. Two non caps lock. Say no back to him with an angry emoji. Just to keep <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> Fuck you, you lush. That's what I'll say. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Uh, hey, dude. He's got an interview with Russell Brand on Friday. That is fucking I epic. Know. That what? is so epic. Yes. Comes out on what Friday. Uh, now he just needs to morning? bring the Russells together, Crow and Brand, into what? one video. That's right. Did he just, just interview people called Russell? I think he just interviews with people just called Russell. Yeah, that's right. He has a preference for Russells. That's okay. That's right. Huh? He's a Russell sexual. <laughs> <laughs> A I have my biases, you know. Uh, yes. Uh, Peyton Crow for five dollars. Thank you, Nerd Rotic, As Mahler, Exude Agul. Question for you all: Who wins, John Wick versus Tyler Rake from Extraction? Hmm. That's a well, good... John Wick. He's got more plot armor. Yeah, he's immortal. I mean, he can't get Quantic shot. Kills. He was, he's been murdered like a million times. He doesn't die. To be fair, John, John Wick's more Rake, entertaining. Tyler Rake, Rake got killed. He uh, got killed at too. Least once. Dude, oh, yeah. and it wasn't from the bullet wound. It was landing in a, in a river in India. <laughs> <That's>... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the he would have gotten. <laughs> he died of dysentery. <laughs> that would have um, killed him instantly. <laughs> didn't, didn't the beginning, the, the, only criti the only criticism I have. <laughs> is didn't the beginning of the extract didn't the beginning of extraction two sort of undo the ending of extraction one yeah they like they pretend like the second we cut away at the end of extraction one a huge team of medical people came on the scene and grabbed him straight away and tried to help him oh god look at him oh help him it's just like look he died <laughs> <laughs> no, that yeah. that, that whole <laughs> scene spells out the executive team that came into the writers and brought it back to life. That's what it, it was, was supposed to reflect on. I really Shit, like people like that movie. Two, but Extraction One story was pretty clear, right? Like he didn't stay for the death of his son. He couldn't bear it. He went to do more tours and stuff. And then, you know, he's been living with that for the rest of his life, all this guilt. And then he finally comes across this mission where there's a kid. And he gets told by his people, you don't have to save this kid anymore. Oh. The extraction's and over. Then, and then, and and Jesus Christ, shut that fucking door. Fucking hell, that's right, girl. <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, so, she just yeah, killed him? The, uh, I think she just killed him. He works his ass him. off to save that kid because it goes beyond the mission at that point. All yeah. the money. He just wants the kid to live. And then yep. he does. He's successful. He sees the kid safe and then falls off the bridge with the bullet wounds in his neck. He's done. Mm. He's out. He's done his job. And then they were like, yeah, but people really liked it. Make another one. <laughs> like, it made right, a lot right. of... It, yeah, it, it did a lot of... Well, so, it, on Netflix no, what, and people it, what it did, yes, it brought in subscribers. So that's, that's the only way you can actually measure success is when something pops that subscriber count, then it gets sequels. That's a, a streaming success. You can't call something like... Mandalor Mandalorian season three, Andor, She Hulk, Willow, Crater, any of this. You, you can't call those successes, which the Access Media, uh, some of those, has been calling successes because during that time, Disney lost millions of subscribers. Millions. So those are Oopsie. not successes. Oopsie doopsie. They did not see that coming. They did not see that coming. Uh, maybe if they made more conservative leaning all right yeah. content <laughs> maybe they made some work <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> they, they they should just make alt right plus <laughs> the alt right streaming service <laughs> oh my gosh i'm surprised it's not a category on netflix at this point mm. <laughs> yes <laughs> and they could yes. just play sound of freedom 24/7 <laughs> We're getting some sclabies. Oh, God. Christopher Miller for $5. As, what do you guys think about Microsoft trying to buy Activision slash Blizzard? Well, I am totally <laughs> against it. It's I happened, isn't I it? I can't the, tell the you court, why. <laughs> but The courts ruled in favor of uh, oh, the, the, um, the purchase. They did. Of course they did, because they initially didn't rule... For it, but then uh, 
some uh, they got paid off. They got paid off, and uh, yeah, then and now, they now they're okay with it. <laughs> yeah. They're no, all, what we changed? Think, we don't think this is good. We're going to block this because uh, you know it goes against the anti-competitive laws. Uh, oh, sorry, you just gave us a big load of fucking money. Yes, we think this is going to be good for the industry. We think this is going to be good for. The the, the only funny thing is, like, the Fox-Disney deal should have never happened. I mean, that was such a breach of every fucking law that's out there, but they somehow managed it. Uh, but... This is if that, politicians are corrupt. That's $71.3 billion Disney paid, and now they're out of fucking money. They're out of fucking money. And... and they don't even have money to, they, they wouldn't know what to do with the Fox properties. Fox, you will be missing Fox with the X-Men by the time Disney's done. You'll be going, those Fox X-Men are pretty fucking good, you know? Well, well. Some of them yeah. were. Some of them were very them fucking were, good. Some, some of them, of them were them shit. Would. We should rank <laughs> them right now. Uh, okay, what's your favorite Fox X-Men movie? Mahler. Oh, fuck. Uh, you X2? said it. Aw. <laughs> I figured you'd be quicker than that. X2. <laughs> I did it. Okay. As. X2. <laughs> Days of Future Past. Really? Oh, yep. Really? Oh, wow. Yep. Uh, X2 no. would be second, and First Class would be third. I really enjoyed Days of Future Past. I think it's really I good. enjoyed it. It's very fan service in a good way. Uh, X2 is pretty fucking good. I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. I, I watch I it. I think it's... X2 is fantastic. Right. I love Brian Cox in that movie. And I like X-Men 1. Mm. I like X-Men 1. I like The yeah, Wolverine. Yeah. But I just think this. I think X2 is better than, X, than the first X-Men. Okay. Mm -hmm. It might be a better movie, but you're asking me what I like the most. Sure. And it's Days of Future Past. Sure. Well, remember, Deadpool is in this selection, right? Yeah, Deadpool's. Like, see, it would be I'd tough. I'd still say X two. I'd still say. I don't even like the Deadpool comic, but I like the movie a lot. I thought the first one. I thought the first movie was fine. I thought it was funny. I don't think it's the messiah of comedy that people make it out to be. Deadpool. I think it's. Yeah, I think it's good. It's a good fun film. It's a fun movie. Yeah, it's not a messiah of comedy. <laughs> um, I think it's just a good movie. Yeah, it's a good it's a good movie. And that's a good thing that it's a good movie. And I think that's Gina Carano's titty bag. And it was a good movie because Fox didn't know what they had. They threw a budget at it because there was some fan response and uh you know Ryan Reynolds had a little bit of juice and they were able to make something and Tim Miller uh <clears throat> you know did a really good job directing it. Oh, Tim Miller, sorry. I, I was thinking of TJ Miller for a second. No. No, he's done. Uh, he's done. What about what? worst then? Worst, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine. Well, there's some I haven't seen. I didn't see that because it looked like utter dog shit. I didn't see the it last X Men film. X Men Origins. The worst, the worst one that I saw. Apocalypse. That's second worst. Apocalypse. I yeah, think I think Apoc might be yeah, yeah. Apocalypse. Because Apocalypse that's the awful. worst one I've seen. But there's a couple that I just haven't seen because of how bad. Origins of Wolverine really like what they did to Deadpool was uh something else. <laughs> the end at the end, but the end of Deadpool 2 is so that's funny yeah. when he just <laughs> like X-Men 3. <laughs> a lot of people hate it for good reason, but the, uh, it's got moments that I like. I like X-Men 3 compared to yeah. <laughs> yeah, to to X Men Apocalypse and fucking X War Wolverine Origins, yeah. The, I'm Dark Ooh. Phoenix. Don't forget that one. Oh God, I did forget about Dark Phoenix. Yeah, that one's fucking terrible. Oh, yeah. I didn't. A, I didn't see. I didn't see. I didn't see that. I didn't a see wacky collection uh, in the Fox X Men series, haven't you? There is a wacky. There's there's one I haven't seen. It is was that the uh, what was it called? The one with um. Maisie Williams and uh, yeah, and bl oh my god, I the, hate something mutants, <laughs> secret mutants, or whatever just, mutant thing. <laughs> Someone in chat will know. Was it new mutants? Doc? New mutants, was that it? <clears throat> yeah, nobody saw it. 
Yeah, I didn't see. I, I didn't see it. Everyone heard. Yeah, it's New Rocky Mutants. It's got uh, Anya Taylor Joy in it too, who like I yeah. like. I think she's great. But um, yeah, I didn't see. I, I forgot it was called New Mutants. Damn it. Uh, I didn't care. Oh, I, I didn't didn't see that. Couldn't be bothered with that fucking movie at all. But it looked like a complete disaster. I mean, the whole the whole. Um, well, after the, project, show, the whole project was after a after ruining Dark Phoenix a second time, as much as I like yeah, X three, no, it's insane. You take the best fucking comic run, uh, easily top three comic book runs of all time, uh, and just fuck it up twice, and you don't realize like you don't get another shot at this in the public sphere you, you don't get like oh well we'll do dark phoenix a third time and that'll that'll get them coming people go oh, we've seen this we've seen this already it's okay yeah and it's, it's so weird to think because like they they were almost the mcu again wouldn't it because it was like you had the raimi almost mcu and like fox almost mcu until the because you'd think with the three x-men it's like so now what and it's like we'll splinter off with wolverine and then they make one of the worst superhero movies in history i don't know why that happened I guess the writer's strike, right? With a bunch of other stuff, which is kind of funny to think about right now. Um, and then, like, The Wolverine. I, I just, I don't, did you guys see that? I did. I like it. I, it's, I thought it's the fine. Wolverine, I liked it. It's fine. It's fine. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I liked fine it. Best, yeah. I don't think it was fine. It I is, liked it. It is mid. It is a mid movie, as mid as it gets, but it's like, I'd watch it a hundred times over fucking Dark Phoenix. I think if you watched it today, comparative to what you've been putting out, you won't be saying it's fucking mid. Very yeah, that's a bad maybe. third act. I liked it up until the third act. Third act it gets Silver Samurai is the bad guy in that, right? It is, yeah. which is a good bad guy, but just the whole thing was fucking messy and dumb. Because yeah, then they went first class as a sort of attempt at being like we got the like we're rebooting. Was that was I forget the idea when that came out. Well, was the it, was idea the was it, it was meant to be on the same timeline, but. They oh, they I just... don't know if it was was because first class is very much on its own. Um, it's only Days of Future Past that starts to yeah blend them right yeah. Because yeah, I think I think first class might have been an attempt to be like, all right, we've got all of our new actors playing the characters again, and we're going to make a bunch more. But it well, doing it in the well sixties was fucking cool. That was a great idea. That's how they should make yeah, the Fantastic really Four too. The movie. Fantastic Four should absolutely their first movie should entirely take place in the sixties. And then, God, it's such a weird timeline, the X-Men Fox movies. They were never sure of what the hell they were doing, were they? No, but, I mean, that's how we got some gems and some absolute dog shit. Well, yeah, because Logan is one of the most critically acclaimed ones, and it's it's a definitive end. It, there's no yeah. building off of that. And I, I'll never watch it again. Like, I, I watched it. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I like well, it. Well, like, Mangold it. was apparently upset to find out that Wolverine's coming back in this new movie, and it's just like... You just directed Indiana Jones. Shut the I mean, yeah, fuck up. I think I saw a tweet response that was literally, you can't talk about anything to do with movie quality right yeah, now. Man, okay? go, go back, go back to making Ford versus Ferrari exactly. and 310 to you. Just yes, go back please. to that. Just get out of genre, dude. You're you're great in other places and obviously can't handle the, the heat. The heat. To be fair, I, maybe he didn't see the other Indiana Jones films, and so he just went off what Kathleen Kennedy told him. He was always a sad, broken piece of shit who was hated by everybody. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, and he was always, I'm surprised. It's because, you know what? This was the bridge too far. But, like, if it came out around Last Jedi, there would be, Indy was always this way. You never understood <laughs> Indy. Remember, Remember that one scene where Indy was miserable? Yeah. See? 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 Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> guys it's not as bad as it was in 2018 it really isn't like it's all falling apart now and it's fun mm -hmm. and it's all dead but man the cope around the last jedi was and doctor who particularly were just some of the, some of the most retarded shit i've ever well, heard to be, it's amazing to look back on because ryan johnson's actually cultivated a fan base where they literally say like it's stupid on purpose to trick stupid people into thinking it's not smart oh yeah oh, dude like, what the fuck? i know that's what i was trying to say in my video but i can't say it as well so i just yeah i went to the isn't that isn't that the fucking meme <laughs> yeah i meant to sound retarded it's yeah. supposed to be dumb okay 
but, and then you point out like, but this just still doesn't make sense. This no, character, this dude, then they're just like, no, 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 you didn't understand. That's on purpose. It it's goes above on your head. purpose. It's the dumb school of filmmaking to make filmmakers look smart when they're not. I think I've told you guys before, but seriously, there is a line in Glass Onion that I'm slightly paraphrasing, but it basically goes, the main character was so smart she died. What? Oh, I get it. No, no, I, I think... There are Ryan Johnson is one of those people who thinks he is too smart for this world. I mean, uh, oh. people in chat will know what I'm talking about, but basically, the killer Graham, uh, not Graham Norton, fucking hell, Edward Norton, <laughs> Graham <laughs> Norton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing people. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Edward Norton's the killer, right? So he's he's got to be you know powerful enough to kill, but simultaneously, Ryan wants to write him as a complete clown, right? An idiot, a stupid worthless like evil villain man that no one likes and so he kills <laughs> one of the main women in the film that's what starts all of this off and so the way ryan writes it is that she wasn't stupid enough to fear him she was far too clever for him but she didn't realize that he had spiked her drink and killed her and so we were like she's so smart she died yes and if you remember, I don't know if you saw the first Knives Out, but he had a character that was such a good nurse, she accidentally switched the two medications automatically that she was giving someone at the beginning. Oh. His writing drives me absolutely fucking up the wall. Oh yeah, he's shit. It. he's shit. It's, it's like um, you, you, you present Situation X and then you just tell the audience it's not X, it's Y. And you're like, that's nice. Netflix but gave him see it. <laughs> almost a half a billion dollars. To make these, to make and they wonder shit. why they're losing money. And they well, wonder, not losing money, but they wonder why. Where the well, money's they let Lauren from. Schmidt Hissridge write another fucking series of. They like kept her over Henry Cavill. That that should make it abundantly clear. That it's a bunch of slobbering window licking morons running that place. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just curious if you'll ever Ryan will ever write a villain that's not in universe retarded, retarded to get yeah. away with everything. Just, well, all of his villains will be watching youtubers because we're so in his fucking head did you guys in watch that giant out, head the one what they mentioned all shit did you mention the in, in knives out one chris evans is the bad guy in that and he says to a girl at one point like are you busy getting your sjw degree yeah and it's like oh <laughs> oh they're, they're playing among us in last Sunday, by the way they are playing among us <sighs> That shit is dead, and it died like two years ago. So uh -huh. shit. Like, what are you doing? <sighs> uh, terrified thirty eight for nine ninety nine. Hail real BBC. <laughs> Anyone check Cinema Roberto's uh, take on Indie Five? Basically says it's great and ends with, "Please stop focusing on box office numbers." <laughs> 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 and that is not the only person who's liked Indiana Jones who said that. It's like the box office; it doesn't indicate. If a movie's good or not, and y yes, I completely fucking agree with you. There's a lot of movies that uh, Doctor Strange Mom does not reflect. Its box office does not reflect how fucking bad that movie was. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make that much. Did, Mahler, you did hear that they yes. added $100 million to the budget mm. of Doctor Strange. Isn't that weird? Mm. Isn't that weird? Now yeah. do that with every Marvel movie. Because you would have to, because that's how much I they like all that, cost. Um, did you guys see like the uh, Benedict Cumberbatch said that he's set to record like scenes and lines and shit next year for uh, upcoming Marvel projects? He said that in an interview or something. Simu Liu has put out tweets uh, or, or, or comments in an interview saying like, "Well, the plan was to have a Shang Chi sequel after Kang Dynasty or whatever, but I don't know what it's happening now." <laughs> It's like, hmm. oh, the absolute triumph that was oh, this best no. big hit that was one of Marvel's best movies of phase four isn't so actually so getting money. a sequel. I thought it made all the money, it lost it, uh, guaranteed to have a sequel, right? Come well, on, and that's not even conjecture. They posted a loss for that year, a yeah. huge loss for that year, which means all their movies lost money, okay. Uh, Striker X24 for $10. Gary, Megan Kelly is going over how Disney is collapsing. 
Is she saying anything that we haven't over the last five years? That's my only question. Uh, would you ever do an interview with her on it since uh, you guys are more knowledgeable about it? Yeah, I'll talk to anybody. They ask. Oh, by the way, part of why I mentioned um, Benedict Cumberbatch is like, I find it funny that Disney have already, they're squeezing him every chance they get, right? Because he's like the best actor they have left. But Simu Liu doesn't even know when his movie is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch will be recording scenes for like all Marvel movies, probably. He'll he'll be just you'll walk in and be like, "What's my line?" He'll be like, "Say, oh no, over there," and then move your arms. And you'll be like, "Yeah, okay, fine." Let's finish the super chat because it's I don't know how to take this or have as oh. since British people sound smarter. Well, then you would ask Marla. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think as sounds smart. I like your Marla. <laughs> Not, <laughs> not all British people sound smarter, right? <laughs> I, I think it's all right. <laughs> I think you sound beautiful. I sound fucking intelligent, all right? <laughs> all right? Fuck the fuck off if you don't think I do. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Megan Kelly's, I mean, she's hot. I don't even know who she is. She's hot. I don't know who she is. She's a. Uh, she used to be on Fox News, and then she went to she NBC. Spell her name right? M E G Y N. Fucking O B G Y N. More like. I mean, you know. Would. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. Come on. Would. Yeah. That's a good-looking woman. Uh, Agamemnon, fireman. For ten dollars, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying hard to forget Indy Five exists, but the fact that it does uh, makes me so sad. I'm all for a Crystal Skull redemption arc, like what happened no. with the prequels. I like it better than Temple of Doom. I, you can have the wrong yeah. opinion about that. I mean, that's part of the freedom of uh, of opinion. This uh, is why you guys had to leave to have those kinds of freedoms. Because me and Az, we're just not letting that happen. No. There's limits. Well, There's Chris, limits Crystal Skull freedom. doesn't exist in my world, so it can't be better than Temple of Doom, okay? That's probably why we left America in 1776. Mm -hmm. Somebody went, I like Crystal Skull, but it's Temple of Doom. <laughs> and we went, fuck this shit. We pointed out. to the boats. Go yeah, back like, and watch it. Paddle. Temple of Doom Come is on. awesome, dude. It's I great. love Temple of Doom. Yeah. Great film. Fun film. Carnage under Kate, Kate Capshaw is actually really endearing when you watch her now compared to um oh, I fucking know, right? girl pop Uh I loved how hang on a second, I gotta check the time here. Do 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 ba do time says okay. We got a couple more, then we gotta get out. Oh shit, we really gotta get out. Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> Carnage Undone for $9.99. Uh, I loved how Sound of Freedom beat the DOA Jones on Mercaday. Love to see that media trying to say sex trafficking is not a thing and call Sound of Freedom a QAnon conspiracy. Yeah, that is uh, some crazy shit. But uh, <gasps> as I said on Twitter, welcome to the hill you're going to die on because you will. Indies Monday's coming. And what is it? <laughs> 3.2 million. Down. That is a, a, a Monday to Monday drop of 73%. Oh, oh my God. Now, now, now then, just to put a little bit of context, last Monday was technically a holiday in America because of your 4th of July weekend. I don't care. But it's a 73% drop Monday to Monday. Are you... Are you taking pleasure in this? Yes. Good, because I am. I am. <laughs> if you, remember, if you take too much pleasure, just hit the camera off. You know, just, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, well, 38 seconds should do it with Az. Yeah. It was fine with me. Uh, Grimlock, 1975, uh, on the Streamlab side for 1290. First time dono. All right. We'll be gentle. There is no need to be gentle. Lots. Uh, is, is it true that those with man buns are the type that would be given Anne Frank a dr would have given Anne Frank a drum kit? <laughs> Jesus <What>? Christ! <laughs> Much love to you all on Hail of Fellowship. Too soon. 
<laughs> Thane's on the Streamlabs side for 1290. Check out the Napoleon trailer uh, with Joaquin Phoenix. Looks uh, good. Has some uh, dumb lines from the wife, but historical uh, Josephine was a bitch. Uh, she said, you'd be nothing without me or whatever. Um, not, not Josephine. Josephine. Uh, Josephine. Uh, I, I saw the trailer and everybody's like fawning over it. And I thought it looks all right. Looks okay. I'll probably go see it. Ridley Scott hit and miss these days. Lots of miss. Mm -hmm. Lots a lot of, of miss. A lot more miss than hit. <laughs> yeah. A lot um, more miss. Uh, I think it's just so neat that he's he's just charging for you. Know, I think I saw a tweet saying uh, twelve movies since he turned seventy. Uh, fucking good for him, man. Like really good for him. Sorry, his brother passed away. It was really sad. Mm -hmm. I loved his brother was a great director too. Um, directed some of my favorite movies. Uh, so good, like you know, you go, girl. You do what you need to do. Absolutely. S stay the fuck away from Blade Runner and Alien. Uh, yeah, leave him alone. They're uh, fine. You go ahead and do something else. Hayden Crow for ten dollars. Which are your favorite? Mission Impossible, James Bond, or Jason Bourne? I gotta go with Mission Impossible series. All hail the Fellowship. Enjoy you guys. Disney can suck it. Lord of the Rings forever. Damn straight. Uh, mm. Bond is still my favorite. Mission Impossible mm. is better now, and I've never liked Jason Bourne that much. I liked the first Bourne, and then they just got very repetitive very quickly because they all have the same plot yeah i think all three of their mm. best i'd pick bond um all three in the current form is mission impossible yep. so yeah I I that's that's, yeah yeah that's that's the that's the way i'd answer that because mission impossible and bond are fun jason Bourne is shaky action i mean it's well made i i got nothing against it it's just i don't know there's nothing that really stands out i i did enjoy the first one a lot yeah, I mean, and it, it, I think it is a bit, it was a bit of a trendsetter. I think a lot of people copied it after it. it I remember it being a sort of, um, it changed a little bit for what people would do for action with the way that some of those scenes. It, it were changed done. the choreography of fighting. Yeah. Sure. It did. Uh, we'll do a couple more and then we got to bounce. Uh, Tennessee Tism. <laughs> it's a Tism <laughs> for $10. Oompa Loompa. Doopity doo. We got some more. <laughs> Shitty movies for you, Oompa Loompa, <laughs> dippity do. If you don't like them, you're a bigot. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well sung. Uh, how am I supposed to say this? Fuck a James? Big pardon? Fuck a F James? You James. Fuck a James. Sorry, I didn't want to say the F word. Fuck you, James? Virgin? Fuck mm -hmm. you, James. Uh, for nine ninety nine, the audio video club article about Marvel fridging female characters is hilariously ironic. Much love to you three guys and all hail FNT. I'll have is it old or new? I'll have to see it. Uh, rumors: Kathleen Kennedy is, is fired. Also trending. Birdman five twenty twenty one for ten dollars. Well, it's probably from my tweet yesterday where I was told from a very reliable source that Kathleen Kennedy left Lucasfilm Friday. Only to return to work on Monday. No way. I'll take response. Uh, so she got fired over the weekend. No, she just went home and came back. Oh, okay. Yeah, she went home for the weekend. So people don't get fired on Fridays and come back on Mondays. I thought that's. Oh. Mm -hmm. Here she mm -hmm. is. Get the Kennedy's employment status is queer. queer. Yay. Yay! Aloha Yay. Boy for $9.99. The Deadpool movies are too confusing because Ryan, Ryan Reynolds also plays Deadpool in X-Men Origins. That Deadpool was different from current Deadpool. Why didn't they cast a different person in this Deadpool? James Gunn logic. Ah, oh, I see what you're doing there. I see what you're oh. doing there. Um, well, because Ryan Reynolds hasn't looked the same for the past 30 years, I guess. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing was, I don't know if you guys felt this way, but I know a lot of people were like, Ryan should play Deadpool, give him his chance. The Deadpool in X-Men Origins was not giving him the chance. That was something else. Like, people felt that was a really good casting choice, and then they fucked it. The Merc with the mouth. And uh, I feel like he proved that with uh, Deadpool 1. Mm. People were like, oh, shit, okay, yeah, you've got it. 
fun film. If you look at Ryan Reynolds' earlier work, basically all of his work, no offense to the man, but he basically plays Ryan Reynolds in the vast majority of his film. Van, oh, yeah. Van Wilder and, is and, a fucking oh, great Van Wilder, yeah. Great movie. Well, yeah, the, great the movie. guy in uh, Blade Trinity, right? Like He's oh just God, Ryan guy. Reynolds. And, and it, that character is similar okay. to like, what you might expect of a Deadpool. We've got to end it right here. And I gotta go. <laughs> he's gonna, okay. he's gotta go. <laughs> I gotta right. go. I gotta Gary's go. Gary's pulling out. I'm I'm pulling out. You gotta have a good pullout game. So thanks Woo. to the mod Rodics. Thanks to everyone in the chat. Thanks to everyone who left a super chat donation. We're doing a square up while I'm playing a video game. Uh, probably sometime tonight. Sometime tonight. So uh, mm. I'll see you then. Uh, As what you got coming up? Uh, tomorrow, 6 p.m. UK time. Melanie Mack and I will be going through our top 10 video games of all time. Our personal favorites. Not what we think are the best top 10 video games of all time. Uh, Friday, Friday Night Tights, where the guest will be a person. Uh, Josiah. Um, Josiah Whoa. will be the guest. And uh, and then, and then, and then. Stop. And then. And then. And then. Sunday and afternoon then. tea with Az. <laughs> okay. No and Super then. Chat Square Up, because it's been on this channel this week, but we'll go through, as always, loads of different shit. It's afternoon tea with Az. All right. And then, and then. Sunday, Sunday. And then. And then. Uh, Mahler and then. <laughs> you have a possibly on Mission Impossible, possibly impossible, possibly. An open bar, Mission Impossible with Drinker and you on Thursday. Yes. Yeah, we'll be talking about that movie probably because I think he's seeing it hopefully before then. Obviously, I think he is. <laughs> That's the idea. That's the idea. All right, uh, X-ray girl. Uh, playing games, uh, Final Fantasy 16 and 14 online, so that's fun. And uh, sub to mine and Zia's channel. We talked about the first two episodes of Doctor Who, New Who, and it was so good. I wish I had watched more, but I couldn't. Um, so yeah, I'm loving it. There you go. And this is going to be a quick out, folks. So, Bye. cheers. Bye. 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 <laughs>